Right, so good evening and welcome, welcome to the FMG guest series. I am Dr. Anupama Chaudhary Devgan, your physiology faculty. And today we are going to discuss a lot of important uh, FMGE PYQs, PYTs and also what I expect. What kind of questions are we uh, expecting in the upcoming exam? So um, let's start right away. And uh, we, I'm also expecting you to interact and to put in your comments in the chat box. And if there are any questions, I would always, uh, I always love to answer your questions. All right, so let's go get on with the task at hand. And that is to start with our PYQs and PYTs and our guest paper series. I am Dr. Anupama Chaudhary Devkan. Right, so let's see the first slide. Now, first slide is on the distribution of total body water. Now, as far as distribution of total body water is concerned, we know that the total body water is 60% of the body weight. Right, this is 60% of the body weight, and this total body water is divided into two main compartments. Two thirds of the total body water is in the ICF. ICF is 40% of the body weight, and one third is in the ECF, and ECF is further subdivided into plasma, which is 5% of the body weight, and interstitial fluid, which is 15% of the body weight. So, very simple questions from here. Uh, majority of the total body water is in which compartment and your answer is going to be ICF. Two thirds of the total body water is in the ICF. And to remember this, remember the 60, 40, 20 rule. And what is a 60, 40, 20 rule? 60% of body weight is total body water. 40% of body weight is the ICF and 20% is the ECF. So this is what is your 60, 40, 20. All right. Okay, happy to see you too, Meet Patel. Okay, and never give up. I love your uh, name here, never give up. That's true. Good evening, and Dr. NM and um, Sanya. Good evening. All right. Okay, so now let's see another very important slide here, and this is the difference between the ECF and ICF. Now, when you look at the ECF and ICF, the first thing, first important point is that the osmolality of both the ECF and the ICF is the same, right? ECF osmolality and ICF osmolality is the same. This is 290 milliosmoles per liter. The second uh, important point here, which is the most osmotically active particle in the ECF, and this is sodium, which is the most osmotically active particle in the ICF, and that is potassium. This has been asked as a question. So please remember the sodium rich potassium poor is ECF. Potassium rich sodium poor is ICF. The major cation, sodium in the ECF, potassium in the ICF. Major anion chloride in the uh, ECF and miscellaneous phosphates. Miscellaneous phosphates and proteins in the ICF. pH of the ECF is slightly higher than the ICF, 7.4 in the ECF and 7.1 in the ICF. So important point that you have to remember, the sodium rich potassium poor fluid is the ECF and potassium rich sodium poor fluid is the ICF. Take care. All right. Great, Meet Patel. Yes, you're absolutely right. This is the ICF, potassium rich sodium poor. Next. Plasma osmolality. Now, how do we calculate the plasma osmolality? The, uh, what is contributing majorly to plasma osmolality is sodium. We've just discussed how much was the plasma osmolality. We said normal plasma osmolality is 290 milliosmoles per liter, right? And the most important contributor to plasma osmolality is sodium. Right? I've, we wrote that. We saw that in the previous slide. I asked you which is the most osmotically active particle in the ECF and your answer was sodium. Right? So um, plasma osmolality, normal 290 milliosmoles per liter and mo most important contributor is 
sodium. Right? Now, what is the formula? How do we calculate the plasma osmolality? Sodium plus potassium into 2. Why into 2? Sodium and potassium are associated with anions, chloride and bicarbonate. Right? So that is by 2 into sodium plus potassium plus 0 0.055 into glucose. Glucose also contributes to plasma osmolality. Uh, glucose we normally measure in milligrams per deciliter. When I want to convert glucose into milli or smoles per liter, you have to multiply it by 0 0.055. And 0 0.36 into blood urea nitrogen. Blood urea nitrogen is also measured in milligrams per deciliter. To convert blood urea nitrogen to milli or smoles per liter, I have to multiply it by 0 0.36. So this is your formula for plasma osmolality. But please remember, out of 290, sodium and its associated anions, sodium and its associated anions contribute 270 out of 290. Right? So the major contributor to plasma osmolality The major contributor to plasma osmolality is going to be sodium and its associated anions, right? And of course, we can also include potassium. Sodium and potassium are the cations, but of course, majorly is sodium. How much is normal sodium in the plasma? 140 millimoles per liter. How much is potassium? 3.5 to 5 millimoles per liter. So major contributor to plasma osmolality is going to be sodium. Or ECQ par aap se question bhi poochha gaya hai. Let's try and see which is this question. Which of the following causes the largest increase in plasma osmolality? And your answer is sodium. Sodium contributes the maximum. Theek hai? Clear with it so far? All right. Let's go on to the next one. The blood testes barrier, the blood testes barrier is formed by which of the following? Now, uh, please remember, there is a very important blood testes barrier. And this blood testes barrier does not allow substances from the blood to affect the developing sperms in testes. And what is the blood testes barrier? This is formed by the Sertoli cells and tight junctions between the adjacent Sertoli cells are responsible for what is known as the blood testes barrier. And um, uh, what are these tight junctions? So let's have a look. All right. Let's have a look. Now, as far as the tight junctions are concerned, now this is, of course, a, a diagram of intestinal epithelial cells. And even in the intestinal epithelial cells, you'll find these tight junctions. Where are these tight junctions? Tight junctions are towards the lumen. This is a tight junction, which is towards the lumen, towards the luminal membrane. What is the advantage of having these tight junctions? These tight junctions will not allow substances to pass between the cells. Have you understood? So this is what is known as tight junctions, right? And so tight junctions are not only found between the Sertoli cells, like I just told you in the previous slide, but you also have these tight junctions between the intestinal epithelial cells and that too towards the luminal side. Now these tight junctions are made of proteins which are called occludins, claudins and jams. Full form of jams is junctional adhesion molecules. Right? So these are your tight junctions. And just to take this topic further, what do you find towards the middle are two, which are called adherence junctions and desmosomes. And what is attaching the cell to the basement membrane are what are known as hemidesmosomes. Now, the tight junctions form zona or zonula, Occludens. Naam se pata chal raha hai. Occlude kar raha hai. Right? So it's called zona occludens. And adherence junctions in desmosomes form zonula. Adherence. Theek hai? Again, naam se pata chal raha hai. Function kya hoga? Zonula adherence matlab? Cells ko join kar raha hai. 
राइट अध्ययर कर रहा है जोनोला अक्लूडेंस क्या है इट इज नॉट अलाउड सब्सटेंसेस टू पास बिटवीन द सेल्स एंड द प्रोटीन्स व्हिच आर रिस्पांसिबल फॉर दीस टाइट जंक्शंस आर ऑक्लूडेंस क्लोडेंस एंड जैम्स राइट सो दिस इज अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ जंक्शंस बिटवीन द सेल्स let's look at the next one now this says when ors is given to a patient glucose is absorbed by which of the following transport processes now uh, there is uh, when you look at the transport across cell membrane two major types of transport across the cell membrane ek hai passive transport dusra hai active transport and what is passive transport passive transport is downhill transport it is along an electrochemical gradient or active transport kya hai bilkul opposite अप हिल ट्रांसपोर्ट है अगेंस्ट एन इलेक्ट्रोकेमिकल ग्रेडियंट है और जो मेजर डिफरेंस है बिटवीन पैसिव एंड एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट इज दैट पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्ट डज नॉट रिक्वायर एनर्जी बट एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट नीड्स एनर्जी आप डाउन हिल जा रहे हैं पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्ट में एनर्जी की जरूरत नहीं है जब आप अप हिल जा रहे हैं एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट में तो एनर्जी की जरूरत है सो लेट अस सी व्हाट आर दीज नाउ सिंपल डिफ्यूजन ऑस्मोसिस फैसिलिटेटेड डिफ्यूजन दीज आर एग्जांपल्स ऑफ passive transport now when ors is given to a patient so how is glucose going to be absorbed glucose is absorbed by what is known as sglt sodium glucose linked transport which is an example of secondary active co transport right secondary active co transport so the answer to this question is secondary active co transport right secondary active co transport absolutely right varun this is your secondary active co transport now um see this over here absorption of glucose in the intestinal epithelial cells towards the luminal side you have the sodium glucose co transport which is an example of secondary active co transport right and this is with the help of sglt1 sodium glucose linked transport 1 but on the basal side there is a glut there is a glut 2 and glut 2 is an example of facilitated diffusion right facilitated diffusion what is sglt this is an example of secondary active co transport ab sawal uthta hai um glucose ki absorption ये जो मैंने आपसे अभी पहले क्वेश्चन पूछा था इसमें फैसिलिटेटेड डिफ्यूजन भी है और सेकेंडरी एक्टिव को ट्रांसपोर्ट भी है और ग्लूकोज की अब्जॉर्प्शन के लिए दोनों इन्वॉल्व हैं ल्यूमिनल साइड पर सेकेंडरी एक्टिव को ट्रांसपोर्ट है बेसल साइड पर फैसिलिटेटेड डिफ्यूजन है तो आंसर मैंने सेकेंडरी एक्टिव को ट्रांसपोर्ट क्यों दिया द रीजन इज आप देखें ये जो सेकेंडरी एक्टिव को ट्रांसपोर्ट ल्यूमिनल साइड पर है ग्लुट जो एग्जाम्पल है फेसिलिटेटेड डिफ्यूजन का दैट इज ऑन द बेसल साइड so secondary active so uh, when glucose has to be absorbed glucose first has to be absorbed from the lumen to the cell and that is with the help of secondary active co transport once it reaches inside the cell it will enter the plasma with the help of glut so my better answer for that question is sglt or secondary active co transport excellent everybody varun you've got it right okay now the next is insulin dependent glut 4 aapko pata hi hai ki alag alag tarah ke glut hote hain lekin jo insulin dependent glut hai that is glut 4 right aur ye glut 4 kahan kahan par hai this is present on adipocytes and on uh, and on muscle cells skeletal muscle cells cardiac muscle cells so what is it an example of this is an example of facilitated diffusion और याद रखें फेसिलिटेटेड डिफ्यूजन इज पैसिव इट रिक्वायर्स इट डज नॉट रिक्वायर एनर्जी लेकिन फेसिलिटेटेड डिफ्यूजन और सिंपल डिफ्यूजन में फर्क क्या है दोनों पैसिव हैं लेकिन फर्क क्या है फेसिलिटेटेड डिफ्यूजन में देर इज अ कैरियर प्रोटीन व्हिच इज गोइंग टू बी इन्वॉल्व राइट देर इज अ कैरियर प्रोटीन व्हिच इज इन्वॉल्व बट अगेन दिस इज पैसिव डज नॉट नीड एनर्जी नाउ फेसिलिटेटेड डिफ्यूजन जैसे मैंने आपको कहा एक कैरियर प्रोटीन इन्वॉल्व है और यही डायग्राम आपको दिया गया था और आपसे पूछा गया था वॉट इज दिस एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ नाउ प्लीज रिमेंबर वेन अ कैरियर प्रोटीन इज इन्वॉल्व इन फेसिलिटेटेड डिफ्यूजन द सब्सटेंस टू बी ट्रांसपोर्टेड फर्स्ट बाइंड विद द कैरियर प्रोटीन फिर उस कैरियर प्रोटीन का एक कॉन्फॉर्मेशनल चेंज होगा और वो सब्सटेंस विल बी ट्रांसपोर्टेड इन टू द सेल 
सो दिस इज वॉट दिस इज अ कैरियर मीडिएटेड ट्रांसपोर्ट ठीक है इसे कहते हैं कैरियर मीडिएटेड ट्रांसपोर्ट ठीक है ओके सो मीत पटेल का एक बड़ा इंटरेस्टिंग सा क्वेश्चन है कि मैम absorption means into the systemic circulation then why don't we consider glut as the answer beta dhyan dijiyega absorption from the gi tract aapne ors diya hai oral rehydration solution diya hai to yahan par absorption means from the gi tract from the lumen of the gi tract into the cells pehle cells mein aayega phir to glucose blood mein jayega directly to blood mein jayega nahi isn't it so when it is not going directly into the blood we should the better answer is going to be secondary active co transport see that is the reason why in ors i need to give sodium and glucose together isn't it both sodium and glucose are com- are in the ors ha na because we need both for the absorption of sodium we need both of them together for absorption of both sodium and glucose isn't it all right okay so this is a carrier mediated transport और जब भी कोई कैरियर इन्वॉल्व होता है देर इज ऑलवेज ए मैक्सिमम रेट ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट जिसे कहते हैं ट्रांसपोर्ट मैक्सिमा मैक्सिमम रेट ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट अ कैरियर मीडिएटेड ट्रांसपोर्ट सच एज फेसिलिटेटेड डिफ्यूजन विल शो यू ए ट्रांसपोर्ट मैक्सिमा एंड व्हाई ट्रांसपोर्ट मैक्सिमम Uh, why is the maximum rate of transport kyunki jo carrier protein hai it tends to get saturated so there is going to be a maximum rate of transport theek hai and that is known as transport maxima and please remember kahan par aapko ma- transport maxima milega kis tarah ki transport mein aapko transport maxima milega this will be seen in facilitated diffusion not in simple diffusion have you understood simple diffusion mein jo transport hai it is directly proportional to the concentration gradient it is directly proportional to the concentration gradient right so um okay. sorry this is um okay so um the next important point here is okay let's see this now this is a very very important chart because they are uh, th- this is a very important chart and this is what are the types of glut and where do you find them theek okay? hai now please remember glut 4 i have already told you is the only one which is insulin dependent all the others are insulin independent aur ye mujhe kahan milega ye mujhe milega adipocytes pe और मसल सेल्स में ठीक है जो इंसुलिन डिपेंडेंट ट्रांसपोर्ट है अपटेक है ग्लूकोज का दैट अकर्स इन एडिपोसाइट एंड इन द मसल सेल्स नाउ द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इज ग्लूट फाइव क्या है नाउ ग्लूट फाइव इज ए स्पेसिफिक फ्रक्टोज ट्रांसपोर्टर याद रखें एफ ऑफ फाइव एंड फ्रक्टोज ट्रांसपोर्टर दिस विल बी ऑब्वियसली इन द स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन जेजुनम में जहां पर फ्रक्टोज की ऑप्शन होगी एंड सो दैट इज ग्लूट फाइव अब आते हैं ग्लूट वन ग्लूट टू ग्लूट थ्री ये थोड़ा सा कंफ्यूजन कई बार क्रिएट करते हैं सो लेट्स ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड वेयर और ट्राई एंड रिमेंबर वेयर इज ग्लूट नाउ ग्लूट वन ग्लूट वन इज इन द ब्रेन वन ब्रेन सो ग्लूट वन इज इन द ब्रेन इट इज इन द प्लासेंटर वन प्लासेंटर इट इज ऑल्सो इन द आर right and in the kidneys but kidneys mein majorly jo zyada um, abundant hai that is glut 2 two. two kidneys so glut 2 is more abundant than glut 1 in the kidneys do intestine hoti hai small and large intestine to yahan par bhi glut 2 theek hai lekin liver ek hi hai aur phir bhi wahan glut to our pancreas and liver these are two important organs of the uh, gi tract so liver and pancreas yahan par bhi glut 2 theek hai so try and remember this glut 1 will be in the brain in the placenta glut 1 one brain one placenta but also on rpcs right glut 2 will be in the kidneys two kidneys two intestines so it's also in the intestines liver and pancreas two important organs Uh, so these are 
uh, where you will find GLUT2. GLUT3 uh, ki bahut widespread distribution hai, brain mein hai, kidneys mein hai, placenta mein hai. Aur GLUT4, just mein aapko bataya, insulin dependent GLUT hai, which is present in the adipocytes and in the skeletal muscles. Aur GLUT5, ek fructose, specific fructose transporter hai. Chaliye, next. Positive feedback is, is which of the following hormones on LH causes the surge just before ovulation? A positive feedback, just aapko pata hai hai ki there are two major types of feedback control in the body. Jo major control hai, that is done by negative feedback mechanisms. Negative feedback mechanisms, stabilizing mechanisms hote hai, they help to maintain homeostasis. Or negative feedback mechanisms may control of blood pressure, control of pH, control of body temperature, ye sab a jayega. Control of secretion of hormones, this is also done by negative feedback. Positive feedback examples come here, or unke liye jo acronym hai, and that is CLAPS. C se clotting hai, calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum during muscle contraction. Ye do hai positive feedback mechanisms ke example. Phir se C se clotting and calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum during muscle contraction. L say LH surge, just keep a question here. Also, the milk let down reflex that is also uh, by positive feedback. A say hai action potential, jo upstroke hai action potential ka, that is by a positive feedback mechanism. And also, activation of inactive pancreatic enzymes to their active form, that is also by positive feedback. Or P say hai parturition. Delivery ka jo process hai, that is also a positive feedback mechanism. So, yaha par dekhi ka, jo positive feedback hai, which is responsible for LH surge, is due to the positive feedback of estrogen. Estrogen is responsible for the positive feedback and that is going to cause the uh, LH surge just before ovulation. Now, what is this positive feedback of estrogen on LH secretion? Estrogen kya karta hai? LH ki secretion normally if you see this particular graph here, estrogen LH kiss levels ke upar unka ek negative feedback hai. To LH level throughout the menstrual cycle bahut kam hai. Lekin just before ovulation, ye jo negative feedback ka hai estrogen ka LH ke upar, this switches and becomes positive. What does that mean? Estrogen increases LH secretion, which in turn increases estrogen which causes increase in LH to aapko ek sharp LH surge milega aur aapko pata hai ki LH surge ke bina ovulation is not possible right so estrogen is responsible for the LH surge just before ovulation right and LH surge in turn is responsible for ovulation without the LH surge you will not get uh, ovulation all right next it keep uh, interesting sa aapka PYQ hai. Now this says, there's a child defecating in the open. One of the attacking dogs was found dead the next day. There is a high risk of rabies here. He was given anti-rabies serum and Rabipur vaccine. Which of the following is responsible for transport of rabies va virus to the brain? Ab par, how does the rabies virus travel from the periphery into the brain? This is by what is known as retrograde axoplasmic transport retrograde axoplasmic transport ka matlab kya hai ek hota hai anterograde aur dusra hai what is known as retrograde axoplasmic transport retrograde means reverse direction axoplasm ke through going towards the spinal cord and brain that is called retrograde axoplasmic transport aap dekhe Ye hai anterograde from the cell body towards the end of the axon and what is going to be retrograde in the reverse direction towards the cell body. Or anterograde transport mein hume chahiye kinesin. This is for anterograde. Right? Ek molecular motor hai which is involved in anterograde transport. Retrograde transport ke liye jo molecular motor which is involved is dynin. Right? So, the, what is used in the transport of rabies virus towards the brain is the molecular motor, which is called dynin. Kinesin is for anterograde transport. Right? Anterograde transport. Absolutely right. Harsh Patel, the answer is dynin. Anterograde and retrograde transport.
Let's see the next one. Which of the following electrolyte imbalances results in increase in excitability? Now, please remember the two important ions which can affect excitability are potassium and calcium. Lekin yaad rakhe, hypokalemia jab hoga, to cells hyperpolarized hoge. Hypokalemia causes a hyperpolarization or jab bhi neurons and muscles hyperpolarized hai, to unki excitability badhegi nahi, kam ho jayegi. Hypokalemia ke patients bohut commonly complain karte hain ki unke haatho pairo mein jaan nahi hai, muscle weakness hai. Why is muscle weakness? Because neurons and muscles are excitability hai, wo reduced. Hai. That happens in hypokalemia. But your question is what can result in increased, increased excitability? And this is hypocalcemia. Hypocalcemia may neurons and muscles ki excitability jati hai, right? And that is why that Schwarzschild sign positive, hota hai, carpopedal spasms are jate hai, and that is hypocalcemia. Hypocalcemia. Harsh Patel, hyponatremia does not affect excitability. Hyponatremia se plasma osmolality kam hoki, lekin excitability pe koi asar nahi hoga. Thik hai? Excitability, matlab unka jo cells ka response hai, uh, neurons or muscles, do hi excitable cells in body mein, neurons and muscles, unka response uh, uh, zyada hai, right? So increased excitability, that will be seen in hypocalcemia. Hypokalemia may nahi dikhai dega. Hypokalemia may in fact there is a decreased excitability. Is that clear? Harsh Rawat, thik hai? Meet Patel, bilkul sahi aapka answer that it is hypocalcemia. This is the truso sign that you see in hypocalcemic tetany, isn't it? Hypocalcemic tetany may there is tetany kya hoti hai? Tetany, tetany or tetanus mein farak hai. Tetany may there is an increased excitability because of change of electrical property. Tetanus is a state of sustained contraction. Okay? So hypocalcemia causes tetany, increased excitability, right? And that is that is your that is your um, uh, uh, that is the reason for hypocalcemic tetany. So Meet Patel says, ma'am, what if hypokalemia is one of the options? Sorry, hyper hyperkalemia hyperkalemia mein, yes there is an increased ex increased excitability but beta wo nahi denge na aapko options do options uh, itne uh, both hypocalcemia and hypernatremia will increase the excitability but obviously uh, since hyperkalemia is not there so i would um, the answer is hypocalcemia but yes mild to moderate hyperkalemia does cause an increase in excitability lekin severe hyperkalemia decreases excitability to to bhi mera answer hypocalcemia hi hoga theek hai all right okay now let's see this a patient with h1 hb a1c of 11.4% has come to your clinic with severe pain severe pain in his feet at night. Now, which are the pain carrying fibers which are affected here? And that is type C, right? Pain carrying fibers are type C fibers. The pain that we suffer from is type C. So the answer to this question will be uh, pain. Uh, pain fibers will be type C. Okay? All right. Next, the kicker. Now, this is on muscle physiology and this is a very important uh, electron microscopic picture of the sarcomere, right? And what is the sarcomere? Yahan par aap dekhe, to ye ek Z line hai, right? This is one Z line, and this one here is another Z line. And what is present between the two Z lines is the structural and the functional unit of the skeletal muscle, which is the sarcomere. Or sarcomere ke under ek, uh, sarcomere mein ek dark band hai, which is the dark band? Ye wala. A is the dark band, also called the A band, anisotropic to light. And what is dark band? This is myosin plus overlapped actin. Now, within the dark band, there is a slightly lighter area. This is marked as D. This is called the edge zone. Or edge zone kya hai? Keval myosin hai. I band kaun sa hai? I band is the light band, which has got only actin. And this is your I band. E, 
uh, is your I band here. This is only actin. Lekin dhyan dije half of I band ek sarcomere mein hai aur half of I band is in the neighboring sarcomere. And B is half of an I band. Right? So this is as far as your Uh, this is as far as your. Now let's see a cross-sectional view of the skeletal muscle fiber through the H zone will reveal the presence of. This was your important P by Q. H zone may cave myosin. Hoga. Agar A band hota, to actin plus overlapped, uh, um, uh, uh, the myosin plus overlapped actin hota, that means actin and myosin. Or agar I band hota, to only actin. Right? And this would have been the A band. Okay, so this is as far as your. So Shubham says, please, ek bar fast or slow pain ko uh, uh, ki differentiate kare. Dekhi, what is fast and slow pain? Slow uh, pain is carried by, uh, pain is of two types, fast as well as slow pain. A bada ek, uh, uh, ek common si observation hai. Jaisa, for example, aap kisi garam cheez ko agar accidentally touch karte hai, to aap ko ek shah a pain feel hota hai, which is carried by the A delta fibers which makes you withdraw your hand. Right? That is a protective pain which is making you withdraw your hand. That is your fast pain. Lekin jab, because your hand has got burnt, there has been a tissue injury and that injury causes pain which lasts for a longer time and this is the pain that you actually suffer from. That is your slow pain which is carried by C fibers. So, jo pain hum feel karte hain, jiski wajah se hum parishan hote hain, jiski wajah se hum paracetamol dhoon rahe hain, aspirin dhoon rahe hain, that is your slow pain. Fast pain keval uh, momentary hai, that is causing you to withdraw your hand. Right? That is fast pain carried by A delta fibers. Thik hai? Chali hai. Iske baad dekhi ka, sarcolemal proteins. Very important. What is sarcolemma? Yad rakhenge, muscle fiber is equal to the muscle cell. So muscle fiber ki jo cell membrane hai ya jo membrane hai usse hum sarcolemma kahenge. And which are the sarcolemmal proteins? Let's try and see this. Sarcolemmal proteins paanch hai. This is dystrophin, syntropin, sarcospan, sarcoglycan and what is known as dystroglycan. Aur aap dekh rahe hai ki actin is attached to the beta dystroglycan with the help of dystrophin, right? Or ye jo sarcolemmal proteins hain, jo sarcolemma mein uh, obviously present hain, what is their function, what is their role? We do not know the exact role, but probably they are involved in amplification of the force generated by actin and myosin, okay? Ab isi liye, kyu hum ye aise keh rahe hain? Kyunki there are diseases where there is a mutation of these proteins and the patient has muscle weakness hai na aur in mein se jo bahut commonly aap aur ye jin ke bare mein aap bahut commonly sunte ho ek hai duchenne's muscular dystrophy ek hai becker's muscular dystrophy duchenne's muscular dystrophy mein dystrophin completely functional dystrophin completely absent hai right aur becker's muscular dystrophy mein dystrophin present hota hai lekin kam hai right hum yaad rakhe Duchenne's D se shuru ho raha hai, to yaad rakhe, Duchenne's mein dystrophin is deficient. Deficient also starts with D. Or Becker's ke liye yaad rakhe, Becker's is better. B for Becker's and B for better. Us mein dystrophin hai, lekin reduced hai. Right? And so, iske upar ek question dekhi ka, or before we do the question, what is the Gover's sign? Gover's sign kya hai? Agar aap is bachche ko bolte ho, khade hone ke liye, to wo apni body ka sahara lete huye, he gets up. He climbs up his leg using his hand when rising from the floor. This is because of severe proximal muscle weakness. This is typically seen in, in Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Or is kyo a question bhi poocha gaya hai. Gover's sign has been demonstrated. No functional dystrophin. No functional dystrophin. And this is going to be Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Becker's may dystrophin present hoga, lekin kam hoga. Becker's is better. All right. Next, let's see. Same thing, same kind of a clinical scenario and complaints of weakness hai. In difficulty in walking and climbing stairs from childhood that he's not able to do his day-to-day -day activities. Calves are bilaterally hypertrophied. Which of the following substance deficiency 
is the cause here. And this is going to be dystrophin. Dystrophin is one of the sarcolamal proteins, which if absent is responsible for uh, muscle weakness. And in this case, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Chale. Next, wala dekhe. neuromuscular junction, transmission across neuromuscular junction. Cooper, bohat sare questions. So let's revise this quickly. Ye aap dekh rahe hai. Sabse pehle, jo important point hai. Neuromuscular junction is between the A alpha motor neuron and the muscle fiber. Muscle fiber, yaad rakhe, is the muscle cell or the part of the muscle fiber which forms a junction with the A alpha motor neuron. This is thickened to... to uh, to form what is known as the motor end plate. This is known as the motor end plate. And the acetylcholine receptors are motor end plate. And remember how much the impulse goes from the motor neuron to the muscle fiber. First of all, let's see what is the sequence of events. First of all, action potential reaches the end of the A alpha motor neuron. It causes opening of volume gated calcium channels. Just ki wajah se calcium ka influx hoga. Jab calcium ka influx hoga, to, to acetylcholine ki exocytosis hogi. Acetylcholine diffuses across the synaptic cleft. It will bind with its receptors on the motor end plate. Ye jo receptors hai motor end plate par, they are uh, ligand gated sodium and potassium channels. Lekin jin ke through sodium ki influx predominate karegi, ek motor end plate potential generate hoga. Ye motor end plate potential summit ho jayenge or ek action potential generate hoga. This is what is known as the transmission across the uh, a transmission across the neuromuscular junction. Ye sequence of events hai. Hana? Ab do important diseases jin ke questions puche jate hai and that is the Lambert-Eaton syndrome and myasthenia gravis. In Lambert-Eaton syndrome, which is a disease of the presynaptic membrane, antibodies are against voltage-gated calcium channels. Myasthenia gravis, which is a disease of the postsynaptic membrane, antibodies are against the acetylcholine receptors on the motor end plate. Or in dono diseases, may differences they kya hai? Lambert-Eaton syndrome, like I said, the antibodies are against voltage-gated calcium channels on the presynaptic membrane. Yaha par jo patient ek typical history aapko dega that maximum weakness is in the early mornings. As the day progresses, uski weakness improve karti hai. Right? Usko sham ke samay se kam lagta hai. And what is the reason for the kam weakness lagta hai? The reason for that is repeated stimulation is causing accumulation of more and more calcium which increases the release of the neurotransmitter. Therefore, Lambert-Eaton syndrome, like I said, the weakness improves as the day progresses. What happens in myasthenia gravis? Myasthenia gravis may patient aapko a typical history dega. Ki jo uski maximum weakness hai wo sham. Uh, minimum in the morning but maximum in the evenings and the reason for that is yaha par repeated stimulation during the day is causing depletion of acetylcholine. Myasthenia gravis ka patient take history ye bhi aapko batayega ki rest ke baad uski weakness improve kar jati hai. Uski sabse zyada weakness sham ke samay mein hai. Subhe kam aur sham ko zyada. Lambert-Eaton syndrome ka patient aapko bol raha hai ki jo uski maximum weakness hai, that is in the early morning or sham mein kam hoti hai. So, ye dono aapke, um, th ye dono differences hai, right? And so, here you have, this is a patient, ye aapko question poocha gaya, patient having unilateral drooping of eyelid, muscle weakness and headache, symptoms worsen during the evenings. Yahi se aapko hint mil gaya ki ye aapka konsa wala hai, jahan par symptoms are worsening during the evening. Uh, patient feels better while taking neostigmine. What is the most probable cause of this patient's condition? And that is going to be myasthenia gravis. Take it, myasthenia gravis. All right. Now let's have a look at some important topics in central nervous system. Central nervous system is sabse pehle jo aapse commonly questions poocha jate hain, that is regarding receptors. Now, receptors ke upar sabse pehle aap dekhe, pacinian corpuscle kya hai? Pacinian corpuscle is a receptor for fast vibration and for deep pressure. Question aap se poocha kya? Deep pressure ka receptor kaun sa hai? And that is pacinian corpuscle. Ab ye pacinian corpuscle kaha kaha par located hai? Pacinian corpuscles joint capsules mein hai. Ye pacinian corpuscles have a deep location in the skin, in the 
fascia in the muscles, right? So they are also responsible for deep pressure. Nerve fiber associated is going to be a beta. Then the important receptor which is called mesonous corpuscle. Mesonous corpuscle is fine touch, ke liye hai. localized, fine, well localized touch. Its other name is discriminative touch. Yaad rakhe, two point discrimination is a different thing. Fine touch is discriminative touch. Bhi kaha gaya hai, aur aapse question is also asked, discriminative touch ka receptor is hoga and your answer should be mesonous corpuscle. Mesonous corpuscle is for fine, well localized touch. It is also meant for texture, for topogonosis. Topogonosis is for uh, what kind of a surface is it, right? And also for slow vibration, nerve fiber is a beta. Mesonous corpuscle, kahan par hote hai? Mesonous corpuscles, glabrous skin. What is glabrous skin? Non-hairy skin. That is mesonous corpuscle. Just in fingertips, 60% of the receptors in the fingertips are mesonous corpuscles. Right? And these mesonous corpuscles are used for fine, well localized touch, texture, ke liye, topogonosis. Ke liye. Okay? Then the hair end organs which detect light movement on the skin, and the nerve fiber is again A beta. After that, there are receptors that are slowly adapting. Hai. Sabse pehle Ruffini's endings. Aate hai. Ruffini's endings, uh, sorry, Merkel's disc. Sabse pehle. Merkel's disc is for fine, well localized touch, texture, topognosis. Lekin yaad rakhe, agar aap se question aata hai ki fine, well localized touch ya discriminative touch ke liye, kaun sa receptor hai? Meesner's ya Merkel's? Meesner's. Meesner's is the answer for fine, well localized touch or also known as discriminative touch. Phir Ruffini's endings are also meant for uh, fine well localized touch and for prolonged pressure. <coughs> nerve fibers which are associated with Merkel's discs and Ruffini's are again A beta. C mechanoreceptors are meant for crude touch and for pressure. Nerve fiber consa hoga? C. Muscle spindle is a receptor for muscle length or stretch and the nerve fiber which is associated with muscle spindle is 1A and 2. 1A is also known as A alpha and 2 is A beta. Golgi tendon organ is a receptor for muscle tension or is ke saath jo nerve fiber associated hai wo hai 1B that is also known as A alpha. Joint capsule receptors are for joint in position sense A beta. Thermoreceptors for detecting temperature of objects, warm thermoreceptors type C, cold thermoreceptors A delta and C. Pain ke liye free nerve endings hai, fast pain A delta, slow pain. C, sorry. <coughs> so these are your receptors, different receptors and which are the nerve fibers which are associated. Position sense ke liye, position sense ke liye muscle spindles, Golgi tendon organs or joint capsule receptors ka major role hai. What is position sense? This is also known as proprioception proprioception, right? In ka major role hai. So let's look at the next question. You are performing a CNS examination on a patient with uh, a stroke. With his eyes closed, you move his big toe up or down while holding his metatarsophalangeal joint. Ye typical aapko describe kiya gaya hai. Kis tarah se hum kisi bhi patient mein, koi bhi CNS ka patient hai, uh, usme hum proprioception ya joint and position sense ko kis tarah se test karte hai. Bilkul isi tarah se, isn't it? You ask him to state the position of the joint and which of the following fibers is responsible for transmission of sensation. So basically, aap se a question poocha hai ki proprioception ya proprioception, jaise bhi aap se pole, uska nerve fiber kaun sa hai? Now, uh, if you see this, I just told you that proprioception ke liye ye teen receptors hai. Muscle spindles, Golgi tendon organs and joint capsule receptors. Or concept nerve fibers hai A alpha, A beta, A alpha, A beta, right? So it becomes very confusing that what should I answer? Now the better answer here, the better answer here is going to be A alpha. A alpha is a better answer here. A alpha uh, because dhyan dije ka jus fastest conducted sensation hai, that is proprioception proprioception and A alpha but dono A alpha or B, A beta dono hi involved hai lekin slightly better answer will be A alpha. Chaliye, uske baad aap aajai. Alright, let's see the next question. Now this is 
which are the sensory tracts, sensory or ascending tracts. Sensory or ascending tracts, they will take the sensation towards the brain. The sensory or the ascending tracts, these are divided into posterior columns, spinothalamic tracts and the spinocerebellar tracts. Now, when you look at the posterior columns, posterior columns, which we call dorsal columns, which are also known as the dorsal column medial lemniscal pathway. Now, in the posterior columns, the sensations which are going to be carried are fine touch, localization, two-point discrimination, vibration, conscious proprioception, stereognosis, and the ability to judge the different degrees of pressure. When you look at spinothalamic tracts, you've got two of them, lateral spinothalamic tract and the anterior spinothalamic tract. Lateral spinothalamic tract is for pain and temperature. Anterior spinothalamic tract is for crude touch, itch, tickle, sexual sensations and for paragonosis. Pressure up dekhi, do jaghe, do tracts leke ja rahe hain. Anterior spinothalamic tract is for detection of pressure and posterior columns is meant for ability to judge the different degrees of pressure. Spinocerebellar tracts are meant for unconscious proprioception. Ab ka, conscious proprioception is posterior column and unconscious proprioception is spinocerebellar tract. Dono conscious or unconscious proprioception mein farak kya hai? Now you must understand unconscious cerebellum is not a part of your conscious brain. So proprioceptive input jo cerebellum mein ja raha hai, usse hum kahenge unconscious proprioception. Conscious proprioception means what you are aware of. Just say for example, abhi aap agar apne, um, you're sitting on your table and you are uh, probably watching this video. So you are aware of the position of your hip joint or your knee joint. You know these are semi-flexed, aapki elbow semi-flexed. You're aware of it. That is conscious proprioception. Jo cerebellum mein information jari hai, that is known as unconscious proprioception and that is carried by the spinocerebellar tracts. Naam se pata chal raha spinal cord to cerebellum. So spinocerebellar tracts. Now next let's see. So a brief look at the uh, posterior column and the spinothalamic tract. Jo DRG cell hai. DRG cell, dorsal root ganglion cell, ye first order sensory neuron hai. Iska ek peripheral process hai, jo impulses deke aayega skin se, right? Aur ek central process hai, jo spinal cord mein ja raha hai, lekin jo iska central process kahi bhi synapse nahi karega, seedha it ascends upwards, reaches the medulla. So the first synapse will be in the medulla, nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus. Yahan se arise karega second order sensory neuron which is crossing over to the opposite side. So crossing con kar hai second order sensory neuron. Kya hai level crossing ka? Medulla. Cross karne ke baad ye opposite side thalamus pe jata hai. Opposite side thalamus mein this is the second synapse which is in the ventero postero lateral nucleus. Wahan se arise karega ye hamara third order sensory neuron which goes into the sensory cortex or hamara sensory cortex kaun sa hai? Pre-central ya post-central gyrus, post-central gyrus. Broadman's areas 3, 1 and 2. Right? So this is uh, your posterior column. Phir se ek baar. First order sensory neuron DRG cell hai. First synapse medulla mein hai. Yaha se second order sensory neuron arise karega which crosses over to the opposite side. And it goes to the opposite side thalamus, consa nucleus, ventero posterolateral nucleus or vaha se arise karega third order sensory neuron which goes into the sensory cortex. So this is your posterior column. Phir dekhte hai, what is the spinothalamic tract? First order sensory neuron yaha par bhi wahi hai DRG cell. Lekin iska jo first synapse hai, that is in the spinal cord itself. Spinal cord ke dorsal horn mein hi first synapse hai. Either at the level of entry into the spinal cord or one to two levels above. Yaha se arise karta hai second order sensory neuron which crosses over to the opposite side, ascends upwards. Second synapse yaha par bhi thalamus mein hai. Ventero posterior lateral nucleus jaha se third order sensory neuron goes to the sensory cortex. Dhyan dije ka, dono posterior column or spinothalamic tracts mein, the crossing is done by the second order sensory neuron. But the level of crossing is different. In the case of posterior column, it was the medulla. In the case of spinothalamic tract, it is at the level of the spinal cord itself. 
राइट सो ये हमारा एक क्वेश्चन इसके ऊपर डेकसेशन ऑफ असेंडिंग स्पाइनल पाथवेज कहां पर हो रहा है डेकसेशन का मतलब क्रॉसिंग ओवर टू द ऑपोजिट साइड वेयर इज इट टेकिंग प्लेस एंड वी नो वी जस्ट डिस्कस्ड दैट स्पाइनल थैलामिक ट्रैक्ट इज स्पाइनल कॉर्ड एंड posterior columns will decussate in the medulla so my answer to this question is c theek hai all right <clears throat> i think all of you seem to have got it correct if this is the question that you were answering all right let's see the next one so the same thing posterior column and spinal thalamic tract which i've already discussed with you phir aate hain descending tracts par now descending tracts दो तरह के हैं देर इज मीडियल डिसेंडिंग ट्रैक्ट एंड देर आर दीज लैटरल डिसेंडिंग ट्रैक्ट पहले मीडियल डिसेंडिंग ट्रैक्ट को देखते हैं मीडियल डिसेंडिंग ट्रैक्ट आर मेन फॉर कंट्रोल ऑफ एग्जियल मसल टोन एंड पॉस्चर में कौन से कौन से हमारे मीडियल डिसेंडिंग ट्रैक्ट हैं एंटीरियर कॉटिको स्पाइनल वेस्टिबुलर स्पाइनल टेक्टो स्पाइनल रेटिकुलर स्पाइनल रेटिकुलर स्पाइनल इज डिवाइडेड इन टू पॉन्टाइन एंड और एक्साइटेटरी एंड मिड्यूलरी और इनपिटरी and when i look at the lateral descending tracts lateral descending tracts are meant for control of distal muscles jaise ye small muscles of the hand so these are involved in fine skill movement do hai aapke lateral descending tracts ek hai lateral cortico spinal tract jise hum pyramidal tract kehte hain and number 2 is rubro spinal tract to ye broadly are your descending tracts tone and posture ke liye medial descending tracts movement fine skill movement ke liye lateral descending tracts ठीक है अब आ रहे एक बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक पर जो बहुत बार पूछा गया है एंड दैट इज योर ब्राउन सी कार्ड सिंड्रोम ब्राउन सी कार्ड सिंड्रोम में आप देख रहे हैं जैसे ये क्रॉस सेक्शन स्पाइनल कॉर्ड का दिखाया गया है तो uh, ये जो येलो uh, में है ये सेंसरी ट्रैक्ट हैं राइट सेंसरी ट्रैक्ट हैं दिस इज द पोस्टीरियर कॉलम ये स्पाइनो सेरेबेला ट्रैक्ट हैं ये स्पाइनोथेनामिक ट्रैक्ट हैं और ये जो आप ग्रीन में देख रहे हैं ये हमारे डिसेंडिंग मोटर ट्रैक्ट हैं जब हम हेमी सेक्शन जब किसी पेशेंट का एक हेमी सेक्शन ऑफ स्पाइनल कॉर्ड होता है देन इट गिव्स राइज टू व्हाट इज नोन एज द ब्राउन सी कार्ड सिंड्रोम और द हेमी सेक्शन ऑफ द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड नाउ टू रिमेंबर हेमी सेक्शन ऑफ स्पाइनल कॉर्ड वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन रिमेंबर दीज फोर पॉइंट ब्राउन सी कार्ड बस स्टॉप बस स्टॉप याद रखिए ब्राउन सी कार्ड में टेम्परेचर पेन ऑफ द ऑपोजिट साइड विल बी लॉस्ट सेकेंड पॉइंट टच इज लीस्ट अफेक्टेड क्योंकि टच का डुबल ट्रांसमिशन है ऑपोजिट साइड स्पाइनोथलामिक ट्रैक्ट एंड सेम साइड पोस्टीरियर कॉलम राइट सो टच इज गोइंग टू बी लीस्ट अफेक्टेड ऑल अदर सेंसेशन विच आर द पोस्टीरियर कॉलम सेंसेशन दीज आर लॉस्ट ऑन द सेम साइड मोटर पैरालिसिस विल बी सेम साइड ये चार इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स आपको याद रखने हैं बस स्टॉप ब्राउन सी कार्ड में टेम्परेचर पेन ऑफ ऑपोजिट साइड विल बी लॉस्ट ऑफ कोर्स बिलो द लेवल ऑफ इजन टच इज लीस्ट अफेक्टेड ऑल अदर सेंसेशंस लॉस्ट ऑन सेम साइड एंड मोटर पैरालिसिस सेम साइड सो दिस इज योर ब्राउन सी कार्ड और इसी के ऊपर आपको क्वेश्चन एक सैम्पल क्वेश्चन देखिएगा ब्राउन सी कार्ड लीड्स टू डैमेज टू विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज इट गोइंग टू बी असेंडिंग सेंसरी एंड डिसेंडिंग मोटर पाथवेज डिसेंडिंग सेंसरी पाथवेज हैव टू बी असेंडिंग एंड मोटर मोटर पाथवेज आर ऑल डिसेंडिंग सो आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन विल बी बोथ असेंडिंग सेंसरी एंड द डिसेंडिंग मोटर पाथवेज ठीक है चलिए अगला देखिएगा स्पीच स्पीच के ऊपर बहुत सारे क्वेश्चन वर्निकेज एंड ब्रोकाज एरियाज पे बहुत सारे क्वेश्चन आते हैं तो इनको इसको भी रिवाइज करना बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है वर्निकेज एरिया क्या है राइट टू इंपॉर्टेंट एरियाज ब्रोकाज वर्निकेज वर्निकेज एरिया इज वॉट इज इन्वॉल्व इन कॉम्प्रीहेंशन ऑफ स्पीच नॉट ओनली स्पीच इट इज इन्वॉल्व इन द कॉम्प्रीहेंशन ऑफ रिटर्न एज वेल एज द स्पोकन वर्ड सो दिस इज योर वर्निकेज एरिया राइट वर्निकेज एरिया कहां पर है दिस इज इन दोस्टीरियर एंड ऑफ द सुपीरियर टेम्पोरल गाइडस जैसे आप यहां देख रहे हैं वर्निकेज एरिया पोस्टीरियर एंड ऑफ सुपीरियर टेम्पोरल गाइडस एंड दिस इज इन्वॉल्व इन कॉम्प्रीहेंशन नॉट ओनली ऑफ द स्पोकन वर्ड बट ऑल्सो द रिटन वर्ड तो अगर इस एरिया का लीजन है वर्निकेज एरिया का लीजन है तो वो कुछ भी समझ नहीं पाएगा लेकिन वो बोल पाएगा और वो जो कुछ भी बोल रहा है दैट इज मेकिंग नो सेंस it is also called nonsensical speech or it is also called fluent aphasia 
ब्रोकास एरिया देखें ब्रोकास एरिया दिस इज इन्वॉल्व इन द मोटर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ स्पीच और ये कहां पर है दिस इज लोकेटेड इन द इंफीरियर एंड ऑफ द मोटर कॉटेक्स इन द फ्रंट लोब जो प्री सेंट्रल वायरस है उसका जो लोअर मोस्ट पार्ट है दैट इज द ब्रोकास एरिया very large area which involves the muscles of face tongue larynx etc are all represented here that is the broca's area it is involved in motor aspect of speech to agar is area ka lesion hai to wo samajh pa raha hai kyunki uska wernicke's area intact hai lekin ab wo articulate nahi kar pa raha hai bol nahi pa raha hai so the aphasia is known as non fluent expressive or motor aphasia phir aata hai angular gyrus now this is the angular gyrus angular gyrus is involved in processing of visual information and the written word and the aphasia if there's a lesion only of the angular gyrus the kind of aphasia it gives rise to is known as anomic in phase aphasia matlab usko samajh aa jayegi for example agar aapne use ek bus ki picture di hai to wo bol payega ki isme log baith ke ek jagah se dusri jagah ja rahe hain lekin wo ye nahi describe kar payega ye nahi bata payega ki uska exact naam kya hai what is it called is it a bus is it a truck is it a jeep is it a car he will not be able to tell you that so that is called anomic aphasia right so these are the two important areas broca's or motor aspect of speech and wernicke's areas which is involved in comprehension of speech not only speech but also the written word theek hai ji bilkul up all right next let's see a 25 year old patient after head trauma presented to the emergency room on neurological examination he was found to have normal handwriting and could copy shapes of objects but could not speak right localized lesion he could not speak he's not able to speak so the, this is the motor aspect he's able to comprehend so this is going to be broca's broca's area is going to be affected here theek hai all right let's see the next one in which stage of sleep are k complexes and sleep spindles going to be seen right yaad rakhe uh, jo eeg waves hain they are to remember them aap yaad rakhe d tab as you go from delta to beta there is a decrease in the amplitude decrease in the amplitude matlab jo delta wave hai uska amplitude sabse zyada hai largest amplitude wave hai aur frequency badhti jati hai delta ki frequency sabse kam beta ki sabse zyada right amplitude delta ka zyada aur beta ka kam lekin jo frequency hai wo delta ki kam aur beta ki zyada so d tab as you go from delta to beta there is a decrease in amplitude and increase in frequency or frequencies yaad karne ke liye yaad rakhe delta 4 theta 8 alpha 12 for ones are 4 for twos are 8 for threes are 12 and beta ke liye yaad rakhe 30 theek hai so um 4 8 12 and 30 now uh rem sleep mein jo waves record hongi wo typically hai बीटा बीटा नॉर्मली कब होती है जब आप अलर्ट और अवेक होते हैं अब आर एम स्लीप में आप सो रहे हैं लेकिन उस समय भी आपको बीटा वेव्स रिकॉर्ड होंगी दैट इज बाय आर एम स्लीप इज ऑल्सो नोन एज पैराडॉक्सिकल स्लीप एन आर एम स्टेज वन में एन आर एम स्टेज वन में आपको थीटा लाइक एक्टिविटी मिलती है और थीटा का फ्रीक्वेंसी है ट्वेल्व इन अदर वर्ड्स दिस इज एट टू ट्वेल्व हर्ट्स स्टेज टू आर एम में आपको मिलेंगे के कॉम्प्लेक्सेस के कॉम्प्लेक्स एक बायफेजिक वेव है राइट right? उसका एक एक बायफेजिक वेव है इस तरह से पॉजिटिव और नेगेटिव कंपोनेंट है और स्लीप स्पिंडल्स भी आपको स्टेज टू एन आर एम में मिलेंगे स्टेज थ्री में आपको डेल्टा वेव्स मिलेंगी और डेल्टा वेव्स जैसे मैंने आपको कहा ये बहुत लार्ज एम्पलीट्यूड लो फ्रीक्वेंसी वेव्स हैं फ्रीक्वेंसी इज वन टू थ्री hertz right so this is as far as your uh, what are the waves recorded in different stages of sleep aur yahi cheez main aapko dikha rahi hu ek sleep cycle hai aap awake hain eyes closed mind wandering alpha record ho raha hai 8 to 12 hertz aap sone jaate hain stage 
NREM is also known as the stage of dozing. Here you will get theta-like activity, 4 to 7 hertz. Then you go to stage 2 NREM, where there are sleep spindles or K-complexes. Stage 3 is delta, stage 4 is delta, and you will see more. Then you go to stage 3, stage 2, and then you go to REM, where you will be beta waves record. In REM, you spend about 5 to 30 minutes, and this complete cycle takes 90 minutes. It occurs every 90 minutes, right? So this is what is a sleep cycle. Chale, aage dekhe. A patient suffering from Parkinson's disease, what is the most likely reason behind the gradual decline in the therapeutic effect of L-dopa? Hame pata hai ki Parkinson's disease mein kaun sa part basal ganglia ka effect hota hai? That is substantia nigra pars compact. And here the neurons are dopaminergic. They secrete dopamine. And that is why in the treatment of Parkinson's, L-dopa is given. But it is a degenerative condition. So there is a gradual decline in the number of substantia nigra pars compacta neurons and gradual decrease in dopamine. So this is dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra pars compacta continue to degenerate. So the answer to this question is going to be D. It's a degenerative condition. There is a uh, progressive decline in the number of substantia nigra pars compacta neurons. Okay? Answer Harshavat ne diya hai D. Absolutely correct. Let's see now. Let's see the basal ganglia and what are the neurotransmitters secreted and what are the diseases. Basal ganglia ke panch components hai consequence Caudate nucleus, caudate nucleus hai, butamin hai, globus pallidus hai, substantia nigra hai or subthalamic nucleus of Lewis, five components. Now caudate nucleus and butamin is together known as the striatum. 95% of the striatal neurons are GABAergic, 5% secrete acetylcholine and somatostatin. Globus pallidus ke do segments hai, external segment, internal segment, dono GABA secrete karte hai. Substantia nigra pars compacta dopaminergic hai. Dopamine secrete karta hai. Substantia nigra pars reticularis is GABAergic, secretes GABA. Subthalamic nucleus of Lewis secretes glutamate, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter. Ab aate hai lesions par. Yaad rakhe, C for caudate nucleus, C for chorea. Agar caudate nucleus ka lesion hai ya striatum ka lesion hai, to chorea. Or chorea kya hota hai? Flicky movements, right? Globus pallidus ka lesion hai, to athetosis. Athetosis kya hai? Slow writhing movement. That is athetosis. Substantia nigra pars compacta ka lesion hai, to kya hai? Parkinson's. Or Parkinson's mein aapko pata hi hai ki wo tremors at rest hai, shuffling gait hai, wo sab, ha na? Bradykinesia, akinesia hai. Subthalamic nucleus of Lewis ka agar lesion hai, to hemibalismus. Hemibalismus mein, there are violent movements of one half of the body, right? So that is known as hemibalismus. Thik hai? Okay. So ye wala dekhi ka? Ek aur question. Okay. I think Dipinder Singh, aap bol rahe hai ki C option ko explain kare? must be the previous question. Nothing related to Parkinson's? Okay. All right. Okay, so experimental animal develops increased sexual activity, increased appetite, anger, and no fear following a bilateral removal of a certain area of brain. Removal of which of the following structures are responsible for the above mentioned changes in behavior? Now, this is very, very typically seen. This is called Kluver Busey syndrome. Now, what is Kluver Busey syndrome? This is because of a bilateral removal of the amygdala. Amygdala is a part of the limbic system. Amygdala ko bohat bar window of the limbic system bhi kehte hain. Right? Window of the limbic system bhi kehte hain. And what happens in Kluver Busey? Jab dono amygdala where is the amygdala located? This is in the anterior most pole of the temporal lobe. Matlab, agar aap is tarih se dekhe, yaha ka ye ablation jab aap karte hai, 
So then if this part of the temporal anterior most pole of the temporal lobe is removed where the amygdala lies, Kluver Busey syndrome. Now Kluver Busey syndrome is typical features aapko dikhai dete hain. in this experiment experimental animal, first thing he's not afraid of anything. Usne apne haat mein saam pakar, saam ko bhi pakar liya. He's not afraid of anything. Right? Has extreme curiosity about everything, forgets rapidly, increased oral tendency. Jo kuch bhi usko dikhai deta hai, he puts it in his mouth. There is a hypersexuality and decreased emotional reactions. These are typically seen in what is known as the Kluver Busey syndrome. Right? Kluver Busey syndrome. So let's see this here. This is because of bilateral removal of the amygdala. This is typically seen in bilateral removal of the amygdala. All right. Then let's have a look at the hypothalamus. Now, as far as the hypothalamus is concerned, which are the nuclei for different functions? So hunger, thirst, rage, aggression. Hunger center, thirst center, rage center is the lateral hypothalamus. On the other hand, satiety center, reward center is the ventromedial hypothalamus. Heat gain center. Heat gain center, just say, Ajkal Sardun ka mausam hai. You need to gain heat to maintain your body temperature. Ki bahar ka temperature kam hai. Dilli mein minimum temperature is touching 5 degrees, right? So uh, the heat gain center is the posterior hypothalamus. Or uh, heat loss center, which is active in summers. Summers mein you need to lose heat, kyunki bahar ka temperature bahut zada hota hai. And there is a tendency to gain heat, to lose that heat. Anterior hypothalamus is important. Yaad rakhe, summers mein mujhe AC chahiye. So A for AC, A for anterior hypothalamus, including the pre-optic nucleus. Ye aapka heat loss center hai. Circadian rhythm ke liye suprachiasmatic nucleus hai. Sexual activity ke liye anterior most and posterior most portions of the hypothalamus hai. Neurosecretion, neurosecretion ke liye supraoptic and paraventricular nucleus, supraoptic nucleus se ADH or paraventricular nucleus se oxytocin, oxytocin, right? This is what is known as neurosecretion. There are two important nuclei of the hypothalamus which are involved in the synthesis of these hormones that is ADH and oxytocin. ADH mainly from supraoptic nucleus and uh, oxytocin from the paraventricular nucleus, Take care. Now, I have told you that the lateral hypothalamus is hunger center, hai, thirst center, hai, rage center. Hai. So, if there is a bilateral lesion of the lateral hypothalamus, in an experimental animal, we have created a bilateral hypothalamus. Uh, now, what is going to happen to that animal is there is no hunger. There is no hunger, there is no thirst, so there is no rage as well. So, ye is the anorexic um, animal ban jayega. Patla sa, kamzor sa, or ek pone mein kahin betha hua hai. And that is an anorexic animal because of lesion of the lateral hypothalamus. On the other hand, agar ventromedial hypothalamus kya tha? Satiety center. So, if we create ventromedial hypothalamus ka lesion, then there will not be satiety, nahi hogi, to wo khata chala jayega. so there is going to be hyperphagia and rage and aggression. Right? So, remember lateral hypothalamus is your hunger center, thirst center, rage center and ventromedial hypothalamus is your satiety center and the reward center. Alright, let's see the next thing. I also told you that you've got heat gain center, which is a posterior hypothalamus. This is active in winters. I've tried to show you winters here, snow, right? And posterior hypothalamus, kis se heat gain karega? There is increased sympathetic discharge, which causes a peripheral vasoconstriction. Aap dekhi, sardiyo mein aapke haat pair ekdam thande hutte. Peripheral vasoconstriction. Kis ki wajah se? There is increased sympathetic discharge. There is a peripheral vasoconstriction, which uh, minimizes heat loss. There is also what is known as non-shivering thermogenesis which involves brown fat and the shivering. Most important mechanism for heat gain in adults is shivering. Like in shivering is not well developed in infants and newborn, newborns. Infants or newborns may jo, uh, uh, main mechanism of heat gain ka wo hai non-shivering thermogenesis. On the other hand, Garmiyo mein heat loss center, anterior hypothalamus, aapka AC hai. Aap kis tarah se heat loss karte hain? 
by peripheral vasodilation and by sweating. Important question, sweat glands are supplied by, they are supplied by sympathetic like in cholinergic fibers, right? Sympathetic and cholinergic fibers. Chaliye, next, let's see. Next, let's a few important topics from the renal physiology. So let's see. Now, when you look at uh, the glomerulus and the filtration which happens in the glomerulus, which are the forces which are responsible? Yaad rakhi, jo hydrostatic pressure hai, wo push force hota hai, aur jo colloid osmotic pressure hai, wo pull force hai. H in hydrostatic, H for push. Colloid mein double L hai, to yaad rakhi, wo pull. Pull mein bhi double L hai. So, here the major force which is pushing the fluid out of the glomerular capillaries is what is known as PGC, hydrostatic pressure of the glomerular capillary. The pull force which is the fluid that is pi GC or colloid osmotic pressure of the glomerular capillaries. Similarly, hydrostatic pressure of the Bowman's capsule is the push force which is pushing the fluid from the Bowman's capsule into the glomerulus and there is a pull force which pulls the fluid back into the Bowman's capsule that is called pi PC. So forces which are favoring filtration are PGC and pi G BC. Direction of arrows se aap dek sakte hain. And forces which are opposing filtration are pi GC and PBC. Jo forces favor kar rahe, kar rahe filtration ko PGC and pi BC, these are going to be positive. Or jo forces opposed kar rahe filtration ko, that is pi GC and PBC, these are going to be, sorry, pi GC and PBC, these are going to be negative. So net filtration pressure kya ho jayega? PGC minus pi GC minus PBC plus pi BC. Forces jo favor kar rahe filtration ko wo positive honge, jo oppose kar rahe wo negative honge. Right? So let's see this. Net filtration pressure kya hai? PGC minus pi GC minus PBC plus pi BC. Favoring filtration, PGC and pi BC. Or agar mujhe uh, GFR dekhna hai. GFR is directly proportional to the net filtration pressure. Agar net filtration pressure zyada hai, to GFR bhi zyada hoga. Or GFR agar mujhe proportionality ka sign hatana hai, equal to ka lana hai, to equal to ka sign lane ke liye mujhe a constant se multiply karna hai and that constant is KF. And what is KF? It is the product of permeability and the surface area. Right? So factors affecting uh, GFR will be KF, which is permeability and surface area, PGC, pi GC, PBC and pi BC. Thik hai? Ab jate hai questions par. Thik hai? Topic revise kiya, questions dekhte hai. Which of the following statements is true about GFR? Agar hum renal plasma flow ko badhayenge, to GFR badhega, definitely badhega. Kyunki jaysay aapne renal plasma flow ko badhaya, aapne glomerular capillaries mein flow badhaya, to aapne hydrostatic pressure glomerular capillaries ka badha diya hai. Right? More the flow, more will be the hydrostatic pressure in the glomerular capillaries and hydrostatic pressure in glomerular capillaries ye ek force hai jo filtration ko favor kar raha hai. Agar favor kar raha hai, to GFR bad jayega. So my answer is increase renal plasma flow and increase GFR. Thik hai? Dousra bhi dekh lete hai. Increase sympathetic function leads to decrease, increase GFR? Nahi. Jab aap sympathetic discharge ko badhayenge, to afferent arteriolar constriction hoga. Or agar afferent arteriolar constriction hai, so this decreases the hydrostatic pressure in the glomerular capillaries and will decrease the GFR, not increase it. Afferent arteriolar constriction increases GFR? Nahi, ye decrease karta hai. Agar renal plasma flow ko aap kam karenge, to GFR bhi kam hoga, to mera answer hai A. Thik hai? All right.
नेक्स्ट देखिएगा अ फिजियोलॉजिस्ट फिजियोलॉजिस्ट स्टडीज अबाउट द सेंसर व्हिच डिटेक्ट्स द एलिवेटेड सेंसर व्हिच डिटेक्ट्स द एलिवेटेड सोडियम एंड द डिक्रीज जीएफआर इन द गिवन इमेज ऑफ द जक्सटा ग्लोब व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्ट्रक्चर्स एक्ट्स एज द सेंसर तो यहां पर आपको तीन स्ट्रक्चर्स दिए हैं और आपसे पूछा गया है कि व्हिच इज एक्टिंग एज अ सेंसर नाउ एक्टिंग एज अ सेंसर इज वन और ये क्या है ये है ये आपको दिखाया गया है कि डीसीटी के सेल्स हैं and these are what are known as your macula densa cells right these are your macula densa cells or macula densa cells kya hai macula densa cells are your sensors they detect macula densa cells these are your sensors they detect the sodium and chloride load in the tubular fluid और ये जो मैक्यूलर डेंसर सेल्स हैं ये है कहां पर दीज आर मॉडिफाइड ट्यूबुलर एपिथेलियल सेल्स राइट दे आर मॉडिफाइड ट्यूबुलर एपिथेलियल सेल्स एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ डीसीटी राइट दिस इज व्हाट इज अ सेंसर मैक्यूलर डेंसर दीज आर अ सेंसर राइट दे आर मॉडिफाइड ट्यूबुलर एपिथेलियल सेल्स एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ डीसीटी टू क्या है टू इज योर दे आर इन द एफरेंट आर्टेरियल दीज आर योर जेजी सेल्स जेजी सेल्स जक्सटा ग्लोमरुलर सेल्स जो रेनिन सिक्रीट करते हैं एंड थ्री इज प्रोबेबली योर एक्स्ट्रा ग्लोमरुलर मिसेंजियल सेल्स दीज आर ऑल पार्ट ऑफ द जक्सटा ग्लोमरुलर एपरेटस ठीक है दे आर ऑल पार्ट ऑफ द जक्सटा ग्लोमरुलर एपरेटस और जक्सटा ग्लोमरुलर एपरेटस का क्या फंक्शन है इनके जो तीन कॉम्पोनेंट्स मैंने आपको बताए कौन से कौन से हैं जे जी सेल्स जो रेनिन को सिक्रीट करते हैं दे आर इन द एफरेंट आर्टीरियल macular denser cells which are modified tubular epithelial cells at the beginning of dct which act like a sensor or tisra maine aapko kaha lasses cells hote hain which are your extra glomerular mesangial cells so ye teen components hai juxta glomerular apparatus ke now um juxta the uh, macular denser cells are involved in tubular glomerular feedback ट्यूबुलर ग्लोमेरुलर फीडबैक क्या है ये एक मैकेनिज्म है विद इन द किडनी व्हिच रेगुलेट्स द सोडियम एक्सक्रीशन राइट ध्यान दीजिएगा कि बिटवीन ए मीन आर्टेरियल प्रेशर ऑफ 90 एंड 200 मिलीमीटर ऑफ मर्क्यूरी द जीएफआर एंड देयरफॉर द सोडियम एक्सक्रीशन विल बी कांस्टेंट हैव यू अंडरस्टूड दिस इज योर ट्यूबुलर ग्लोमेरुलर फीडबैक ट्यूबलो ग्लोबर फीडबैक एक मैकेनिज्म है जो जीएफआर को कांस्टेंट रख रहा है बिटवीन मीन आर्टेरियल प्रेशर्स ऑफ 90 एंड 200 मिलीमीटर ऑफ मर्क्यूरी ठीक है तो आप देखें अगर जीएफआर बढ़ता है राइट right? जीएफआर बढ़ा जब जीएफआर बढ़ेगा तो सोडियम और क्लोराइड लोड ट्यूबुलर फ्लूड में बढ़ेंगे दिस इज सेंस बाय द मैक्यूलर डेंसर मैंने अभी आपको कहा मैक्यूलर डेंसर क्या है इट इज अ सेंसर इट इज एट दीज आर मॉडिफाइड ट्यूबुलर एपिथेलियल सेल्स एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ टीसीटी अब देर इज इन द मैकुलर डेंसर सेल्स देर इज मोर सोडियम एंड क्लोराइड रिब्जॉर्प्शन जब भी सोडियम और क्लोराइड की रिब्जॉर्प्शन बढ़ेगी तो सोडियम पोटेशियम एटी पी एज पंप की एक्टिविटी बढ़ती है मोर पंप एक्टिविटी मीन्स मोर ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ ए टी पी मोर ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ ए टी पी मीन्स देर इज मोर रिलीज ऑफ एडिनोसिन एडिनोसिन इज अ बाय प्रोडक्ट ऑफ ए टी पी हाइड्रोलिस दिस एडिनोसिन एक्ट ऑन ए वन रिसेप्टर्स ऑन द मैकुलर डेंसर सेल्स वहां से कैल्शियम रिलीज होगा ये कैल्शियम विल एक्ट ऑन द स्मूथ मसल सेल्स इन द आफरेंट आर्टीरियल आफरेंट आर्टीरियल कंस्ट्रिक्ट करेगी जिससे जीएफआर कम हो जाएगा और वापस नॉर्मल पर पहुंच जाएगा इसे कहते हैं ट्यूब्यूलो ग्लोमेरुलर फीडबैक जो स्टिमुलस है वो ट्यूब्यूल में है मोर सोडियम एंड क्लोराइड लोड इन द ट्यूबुलर फ्लूड बिकॉज ऑफ इंक्रीज जी लेकिन जो रिस्पॉन्स है वो एफरेंट आर्टीरियल पर है राइट सो सेंसर कौन है मैक्यूलर डेंसर क्या रिलीज कर रहा है एडिनोसिन कहां पर एक्ट कर रहा है एफरेंट आर्टीरियल पर राइट एंड द रिजल्ट इज दैट द जीएफआर विल रिमेन अनचेंज ठीक है सो दिस इज व्हाट इज नोन एज योर ट्यूबुलो ग्लोमेरुलर फीडबैक इज इट ओके राइट नेक्स्ट लेट्स गो ऑन टू a very important graph again which has been asked again and again and that is that is renal clearance renal clearance sabse pehle to clearance ki definition kya hai what is the clearance of a substance naam se pata chal raha hai clearance kya hai clearance is volume of plasma 
cleared of that substance in unit time. Right? Jab bhi hum kisi, kisi bhi substance ki clearance baat karte hain, we want to know the rate at which it is removed from the plasma. Right? So it is the volume of plasma cleared of that substance or free of that substance in unit time. Or jab clearance ki aap formula dekhte hain, wo kya hai? Clearance of a substance X is equal to urinary concentration of that substance into rate of urine flow divided by plasma concentration of that substance. Usko kehte hain clearance, UV by P. This is a formula for clearance, right? UV by P. Now, uh, ye wala agar aap graph dekhen, to yahan par humne plasma concentration hai x axis par, yahan par clearance hai. To yaad rakhe, jo green mein line dikh rahi hai, this is at approximately 125 ml per minute, that is your GFR, and that is the clearance of inulin. Why clearance of inulin is equal to GFR? Because inulin is a substance hai which is freely filtered, not reabsorbed, not secreted. So the rate at which inulin is removed from the plasma is the rate at which it is being filtered. Okay? So clearance of inulin will be equal to clearance of inulin will be equal to the GFR. Okay? Clearance of inulin equal to GFR. Now, dhyan di Kyu humne bola inulin is e clearance of inulin equal to GFR? Kyunki inulin ek aisa substance hai which is freely filtered, not reabsorbed, not secreted. Matlab, the rate at which it is being cleared from the plasma is the rate at which it is being filtered, which is GFR. Ab koi bhi substance agar reabsorb hoga, to uski clearance inulin ki clearance se kam hogi. Aur koi bhi substance agar secrete hoga, to uski clearance inulin ki clearance se zyada hogi. Reabsorption ka mas matlab hai, tubule se wapis blood mein jana. To agar koi substance reabsorb hoga, to uski clearance, inulin ki clearance se kam ho jayegi. Aur agar koi substance secrete hoga, to uski clearance, inulin ki clearance se bad jayegi. To D hai clearance of glucose. Glucose is freely filtered and completely reabsorbed. Thik hai na? Aur yaha par, Hai, a is the clearance of para amino hippuric acid. Para amino hippuric acid is freely filtered and completely secreted in low concentration and incompletely secreted in high concentration. So, this clearance is the most Clearance of creatinine. Creatinine is a substance which is freely filtered and slightly secreted. So, this clearance is the most clearance. Yaad rakhi, clearance of inulin equal to GFR, jitne bhi reabsorbed substances hain, unki clearance inulin ki clearance se kam hogi, jitne bhi secreted substances hain, unki clearance inulin ki clearance se zyada hoga. So A is the clearance of para amino hippuric acid, B is clearance of creatinine, slightly more than inulin clearance, kyunki creatinine is freely filtered and slightly secreted, C is the clearance of inulin and D is the clearance of glucose. Thik hai? So let's see this, sorry. Which of the following is the correct statement? Yes. Inulin clearance is little more than creatinine clearance. Wrong. Creatinine is slightly more than inulin clearance. Inulin clearance is little less than creatinine. This is true. Urea clearance will be more than creatinine? No. Urea is a substance which is freely filtered and partly reabsorbed. So its clearance, creatinine ki clearance se kam hoki, zyada nahi hoki. Urea clearance is same as creatinine clearance, wo bhi galat ho jayega. Urea is freely filtered and partly reabsorbed. Creatinine is freely filtered and slightly secreted. The dono ki clearance alag alag ho ki. All right. Iske baad aap aajai. Next important point par. A 60-year-old case of diabetes mellitus has been noticed on laboratory workup to have microalbuminuria. There is loss of small amounts of albumin in his urine. What is the site of reabsorption of proteins in the filtrate? Proteins, agar filter hote hai, to they will be reabsorbed only in the PCT. Only in the PCT. Okay? Microalbuminuria has small amounts of albumin are present in the urine. They will be re reabsorbed in the PCT. Next, the principal site of absorption of sodium is going to be which of the following? Very, very important question. Bohat baar aa chuka hai. Dhyan dijega, jitni bhi reabsorption hai, majorly PCT mein hi hoti hai. 
चाहे वो सोडियम की हो चाहे वो पोटेशियम की हो चाहे वो कैल्शियम की हो चाहे वो क्लोराइड की हो राइट right? चाहे वो बाइकार्बोनेट की हो ऑल ऑफ दीज आर 60 परसेंट और अप्रॉक्सिमेटली टू थर्ड गोइंग टू बी री एब्सॉर्ब इन द पी सी टी इट सेल्फ ठीक है सो सोडियम की रीअब्सॉर्बन के लिए जो मेजर साइट है वो भी पी सी टी ही है ध्यान दीजिएगा केवल मैग्नीशियम को छोड़ के मैग्नीशियम इज द ओनली वन विच इज मेजरली अब्सॉर्ब इन द थिक असेंडिंग लिम मैग्नीशियम का 60 परसेंट रीअब्सॉर्बन थिक असेंडिंग लिम में है और 30 परसेंट एब्जॉर्बन पी सी टी में है रिवर्स बाकी सब जितने भी आपने आइंस देख रहे हैं इनकी टू थर्ड और सिक्सटी परसेंट रीअब्सॉर्बन इज इन दी पी सी टी इट सेल्फ सोडियम की रीअब्सॉर्बन पी सी टी में अप्रॉक्सिमेटली सिक्सटी परसेंट है थर्टी परसेंट इज इन द थिक असेंडिंग लिम थर्टी परसेंट इज इन द थिक असेंडिंग लिम सेवन परसेंट इज इन द डी सी टी एंड बाकी का थ्री परसेंट इज इन द कलेक्टिंग डक्ट बट दिस इज कंट्रोल्ड बाई Aldosterone. पूरा का पूरा नहीं ऑब्जॉर्ब होगा डिपेंड करता है आपके सोडियम इनटेक पर अगर सोडियम लेवल ज्यादा है तो आ, आ, कम रीअब्सॉर्बन होगी अगर कम है तो ज्यादा रीअब्सॉर्बन होगी ठीक है तो ये वेरिएबल रहेगा ये डिपेंड करेगा कि अल्डोस्टीरॉन की सिक्रीशन कितनी है अल्डोस्टीरॉन रेगुलेट करता है सोडियम रीअब्सॉर्बन इन द कलेक्टिंग डाइट सो सोडियम रीअब्सॉर्बन इन द पी सी इज बाई सेकेंडरी एक्टिव को ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड काउंटर ट्रांसपोर्ट ये पीसीटी आप देख रहे हैं बेजल साइड पर सोडियम पोटेशियम पंप है ल्यूमिनल साइड पर को ट्रांसपोर्ट काउंटर ट्रांसपोर्ट सोडियम ग्लूकोज सोडियम अमाइनो एसिड सोडियम इनऑर्गेनिक फॉस्फरस को ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड काउंटर ट्रांसपोर्ट इज सोडियम एच प्लस सोडियम रीअब्सॉर्बन इन थिक असेंडिंग लिम इज बाय सेकेंडरी एक्टिव को ट्रांसपोर्ट विच इज कॉल्ड एन ए प्लस के प्लस टू सी एल माइनस को ट्रांसपोर्ट जिसके ऊपर लैसिक्स लूप डायोरेटिक्स विल एक्ट ऑन दिस एन ए प्लस के प्लस टू सी एल माइनस को ट्रांसपोर्ट दिस इज ऑल्सो एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ सेकेंडरी एक्टिव को ट्रांसपोर्ट इन द डी सी टी सोडियम क्लोराइड को ट्रांसपोर्ट यह भी सेकेंडरी एक्टिव को ट्रांसपोर्ट है कौन सा डायोरेटिक यहां पर काम करता है थाइजाइड्स थाइजाइड्स ठीक है सोडियम रीअब्सॉर्बन इन लेट डी सी टी इन कलेक्टिंग डाक दिस इज कंट्रोल्ड बाई आलोस्टीरॉन यहां पर सोडियम पोटेशियम एटीपीएस पंप बेजल साइड पर है और ल्यूमिनल साइड पर एपिथीलियल सोडियम चैनल्स The diuretic which acts on epithelial sodium channels is amyloride, and a diuretic which acts on aldosterone, which is anti-aldosterone, spironolactone. ठीक है? तो ये है आपका sodium reabsorption in the late DCT and the collecting duct. अब ये question आपसे पूछा गया sodium chloride, sodium potassium Cl minus Na plus K plus टू सी एल माइनस को ट्रांसपोर्ट कहां पर है दिस इज इन दिक असेंडिंग लिम्ब ऑफ लूप ऑफ हेनली और इनके अगेंस्ट जो डायोरेटिक एक्ट करेगा एंड दैट इज लैसिक्स लूप डायोरेटिक्स इज इन डेट सो दिस इज फ्रूसमाइट दिस विल एक्ट ऑन एन ए प्लस के प्लस टू सी एल माइनस को ट्रांसपोर्ट ठीक है चलिए सोडियम क्लोराइड को ट्रांसपोर्टर कहां पर प्रेजेंट है ये मैं आपको करवा चुकी हूं दिस इज सेकेंडरी एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट इन द डीसीटी और कौन सा डायोरेटिक इसके ऊपर एक्ट करेगा दैट इज थायोसाइड्स थायोसाइड्स ठीक है चलिए आगे ओके नेक्स्ट लेट्स सी If a person starts consuming consuming more sodium suddenly, which of the following is the correct statement? Let's see this. अगर आप intake of sodium को बढ़ाते हैं, तो excretion of sodium बढ़ेगी, definitely, isn't it? अगर आप intake of sodium को बढ़ाएंगे, तो aldosterone की secretion plasma levels अगर sodium के बढ़ते हैं, तो aldosterone की secretion कम हो जाएगी, तो lost sodium का बढ़ेगा in the urine. Does it decrease the ECF? Now, ये ECF को बढ़ाएगा. Intake of more sodium causes less excretion of sodium. No, it increases causes more excretion of sodium. Does it decrease thirst? No, it will increase thirst. Sodium, if intake up more, then the plasma osmolality increases. And if the plasma osmolality increases, then the thirst will also increase. Thirst will also increase. 
Yes, so never give up. Your answer A is correct. Potassium is maximally absorbed in which of the following segments of the nephron? Potassium is also going to be maximally absorbed in the PCT. I have told you that all ions are majorly absorbed in the PCT except magnesium. Magnesium reabsorption is going to be maximum in the thick ascending lip. Yaad rakhe, potassium ka collecting duct mein secretion hota hai. Absorption hai. Secretion is done by aldosterone. Aldosterone kya karta hai collecting duct par? Sodium ki reabsorption ko badhata hai aur potassium ki secretion ko bhi badhata hai. But that happens in the collecting duct. Yes, never give up. Your answer is absolutely right. This is A. Next, maximum water reabsorption occurs in which part of the nephron? Again, the PCT. Maximum reabsorption of water is also in the PCT. ADH will increase water absorption in the collecting duct, but ADH may, uh, can increase only 13 to 15% of water reabsorption. 66%, two-thirds of the water will be absorbed in the PCT, which we call obligatory absorption. This has to happen. Two-thirds of the water will be absorbed in the PCT. Collecting duct, ADH does act on the collecting duct, but ADH can affect only 13 to 15 percent of water reabsorption. And water reabsorption in the collecting duct is known as facultative. PCT is obligatory, but collecting duct will be facultative. All right. Patient with ABG of 7.28. Bicarbonate 28, PCO2 60. This is suggestive of which of the following? Or ISCO, uh, most of your questions are answered by Rome. Respiratory opposite metabolic equal. Respiratory cause, if you have seen it, you must see PCO2 and the pH. Right? Respiratory may PCO2 levels or pH. Ko dekho. In respiratory opposite means if more PCO2, less pH, less PCO2, more is the pH. This is known as the seesaw effect. Hana? PCO2 bharta hai, pH kam ho jata hai. Agar PCO2 kam hota hai, to pH bharta hai. That is the respiratory cause. Respiratory opposite. Metabolic equal. Metabolic mein hum pH ko dekhenge or bicarbonate levels ko dekhenge. More bicarbonate, more pH, metabolic equal. Less pH, less bicarbonate. That is metabolic cause of acidosis and alkalosis. Yahapar, what do you find? PCO2 is elevated. How much is normal PCO2 levels? Normal arterial PCO2 is 40. 40 millimeters of mercury. This is 60 here. So it's increased. And pH is reduced. pH should be close to 7.4. This is reduced, right? So opposite, respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. So this is your respiratory acidosis. Absolutely right. Never give up. You are answering it very well. This is respiratory acidosis. Respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. Respiratory cause ke liye, look at the CO2 levels, look at the pH levels. They have to be opposite. For metabolic causes, look at the bicarbonate and the pH levels. They have to be equal. Both have to be in the same direction. Okay, great. Next, CVS, ke some important topics of CVS which we must discuss here. Plateau potential. Plateau potential is recorded in the cardiac muscle cells. Cardiac muscle cells may have plateau potential. Milega. Plateau potential has got five phases. Phase 0, phase 1, 2, 3, 4. Five phases. Phase zero is depolarization phase, which is because of opening of voltage-gated sodium channels and sodium influx. Phase one, this is phase one here, which is the early repolarization phase, which is because of closure of sodium channels and a decrease in sodium influx. Phase two is plateau phase. Plateau phase may positive charge cell ke andar aara hai or positive charge cell ke bahar ja hai. There is calcium influx through slow calcium channels and there is potassium efflux through voltage-gated potassium channels. 
So calcium influx and potassium efflux. Because positive charge is entering the cell as well as exiting the cells, there is no change in potential and you get a horizontal line of phase 2. Yaha par calcium channels band ho gai, ab shuru hota hai phase 3, which is late repolarization phase, which is only due to potassium efflux. Phase 4, uh, you may or may not be able to record, but if seen, it is the hyperpolarization phase, which is due to slow closure of the potassium channels. Okay? So, this is your plateau phase. And what is the advantage of plateau? Plateau ka advantage is that the absolute refractory period in the cardiac muscles is prolonged. If absolute refractory period is prolonged, the heart cannot be tetanized. What is tetanus? Tetanus is a state of sustained contraction. Heart muscle mein, heart mein mujhe chahiye systole, diastole, systole, diastole, contraction, relaxation, contraction, relax. Agar heart goes into sustained systole, kahani khatam, right? And how is that sustained systole prevented in the heart? Because of the plateau phase and that plateau phase is because of calcium influx through calcium channels, slow calcium channels and there is also a potassium efflux. There is gain of positive charge and loss of positive charge happening at the same time. Next, Ikhika. A researcher is studying the phase of the ventricular muscle action potential. Which phase represents the closing of fast sodium channels? This is going to be seen in phase 1. So this is your closing of the fast sodium channels. Phase 0 may be hai, phase 1 may band hote hai. Phase 2 may calcium under aata hai, potassium bahar jata hai. Phase 3 may calcium ke channels band ho gai, to keval potassium efflux hai. So this is what is the reason for phase 1, that is closure of the sodium channels. Okay? Chale. Aage. Now this is an important, um, sorry. So there has been a little bit of um, uh, the entire diagram has not come in. So let me try and explain this to you. Uh, now when you look at the cardiac cycle, you have a ventricular systole and a ventricular diastole. Now ventricular systole starts, this is, the, uh, this is going to be the onset of ventricular systole. So this is first heart sound, first heart sound right, between the A and the C waves of JVP is going to, what is A wave? A wave is due to atrial contraction. And atrial contraction, aap dekhte hai, in the last part of the ventricular filling, right, last part of the ventricular filling. So, isse pehle hai diastole, ab shuru ho daega ventricular systole. C, uh, C phase of JVP, C is due to bulging of the closed tricuspid valve into the right atrium, during isovolumetric contraction. So this is the isovolumetric contraction phase. Isovolumetric contraction phase. C is recorded in isovolumetric contraction. Bulging of the closed tricuspid valve into the right atrium during isovolumetric contraction. Phir aata hai X descent of JVB. X descent aapko kab milta hai? Ejection phase mein. Why ejection phase? The closed tricuspid valve is pulled downwards during the phase of ejection. So this is yaha par aagya aapka ejection phase. At the end of the ejection phase is the second heart sound. First or second heart sound ke beech mein systole hai. Systole is divided into three phases. Isovolumetric contraction, rapid ejection and slow ejection. Right? S1 is onset of systole, S2 is onset of diastole. Thik hai? Ab dikhe, jo pehla phase hai diastole ka, wo hai isovolumetric relaxation phase. Ye hai isovolumetric relaxation phase. At the end of isovolumetric relaxation, tricuspid valve khulta hai. Jib tricuspid valve, so usse pehle dekhiye, aapko ek positive wave mil raha hai JVP ka, which is called the V wave. Aur ye, uh, aur ye jo V wave hai, ye kis ki wajah se hai? This is because of vil, venous filling of the right atrium just before opening of the tricuspid valve. V wave ke baad mein tricuspid valve khulta hai. 
or at the peak of V wave, you have the opening of the tricuspid valve. Or Jesse tricuspid valve khula, blood right atrium se ventricle mein jayega, and that is responsible for the Y descent. What is Y descent due to? Y descent is due to sudden inrushing of blood from the atrium into the ventricles. Or A wave towards the end of ventricular, uh, ventricular diastole hoga, A is due to atrial contraction. Jo filling phase hai ventricle ka, it is divided into three. There is a rapid filling phase, jahan par aapko wide descent mil raha hai. Diastasis, jis mein bohat kam filling hoti hai. And second rapid filling phase, jahan par, which is due to atrial contraction, jahan aapko A wave milega. So this is the JVP with the cardiac cycle. Are you okay with that? This is the JVP with the cardiac cycle. Phir se, A wave ka karan kya hai? Bul uh, a wave is due to atrial contraction. This is in the last part of ventricular filling, ventricular diastole. C wave is due to bulging of the closed tricuspid valve into the right atrium during isovolumetric contraction. Here X descent is a downward pull of the closed tricuspid valve during the phase of ejection. V wave, V wave, a core positive wave here. This is because of venous filling, venous blood coming into the right atrium just before opening of tricuspid valve. Jesse tricuspid valve khula, blood from the right atrium will go into the right ventricle, which produces a negative wave, which is called the Y descent. Pir ventricle filling ke last phase may atrial contraction hogi, which is responsible for the A wave of JVP. Right? So this is your. Um, JVP with the cardiac cycle. Okay? Chaliye. Ab aate hai ek important point par. What will happen? When are you going to get a prominent A wave? Prominent, yaad rakhye A wave kiske ki wajah se hai? Atrial contraction ki wajah se. Right atrium ki. JVP only reflects the changes on the right side. Ha na? To right atrial contraction ki wajah se A wave hai. Agar tricuspid valve stenosed hai, to right atrium ko zada force lagana padega, to I will get a prominent A wave. This is going to be seen in tricuspid stenosis. On the other hand, agar tricuspid regurgitation hai, to up jo blood hai wo regurgitate karta hai from the ventricle into the atrium, to hamari jo V wave hai, wo prominent ho jayegi. V wave kya tha? Venous filling of the right atrium. Ab right atrium mein blood na keval vein se aara hai, superior and inferior vena keva, but right ventricle se bhi aara hai. To jo V wave hai wo prominent ho jai ki. So in tricuspid regurg regurgitation, the V wave will become prominent. Thik hai? Chali. Aage dekhte hai. Which of the following phases of cardiac cycle corresponds to the first heart sound? I have told you that the first heart sound is when it is finished, when the diastole is finished and the systole is going to be S1 is onset of ventricular systole and which is the first phase of ventricular systole? Isovolumetric contraction. So onset of isovolumetric contraction, you will hear the uh, first heart sound. Is that clear? Right? Onset of the isovolumetric contraction. That means the first part of ventricular systole. Chali, okay. Which of the following is correct about JVP? It's measured from the Ziffy sternum? No, it is measured from the angle of Louis. What is the angle of Louis? It is the junction between the manubrium and the body of sternum. V wave occurs in isovolumetric contraction. Isovolumetric contraction, I have told you which wave is A wave of JVP. Uh, sorry. Uh, C wave of JVP. C wave of JVP. V wave is due to ven venous filling of the right atrium just before opening of the tricuspid valve. Which of the, uh, uh, it rises, so ye bhi galat ho jayega. Rises with deep inspiration normal person? No, the upper level of the JVP, it falls with deep inspiration in a normal person. If it does not fall or rises, this is known as the Kussmaul sign, right? It is known as the Kussmaul sign. This is uh, typically seen in constrictive pericarditis, right? 
Why descent occurs in the rapid ventricle filling phase? This is true. Why descent Q hoga? Jab blood jayega from the right atrium into the right ventricle in the first rapid filling phase, that is responsible for the Y descent. Okay? Chaliye. Large V wave on JVP is seen in which of the following? Mene abhi aapko bataya tricuspid regurgitation. Isn't it? Prominent A wave mujhe kaha milega? In tricuspid stenosis. All right. Aortic regurgitation and atrial fibrillation will not affect the JVP. Atrial fibrillation may absent P waves honge, lekin wo JVP per ko effect nahi karenge. That will affect the, uh, of course, in, in, uh, P absent P wave would also mean that the A waves are not going to be seen in atrial fibrillation. And aortic regurgitation will affect the left side of heart, not the right side. Take it? Chaliye. Okay. Left ventricular pressure volume loop. Now, what is this left ventricular pressure volume loop? Now, in this left ventricular pressure volume loop, this is the complete cardiac cycle which is being represented in the form of a loop. Left ventricular volume x axis per head, left ventricular pressure y axis per head. Now, what is point A? Point A is the point at which the ventricular filling is complete. Volume 120 per hai, pressure 5 per hai. Jaise hi LV ka pressure becomes more than the LA pressure, mitral valve band ho jata hai. To A per mitral valve closes aur yahan par mujhe sunai dega first heart sound. Aur first heart sound ka matla hai, end of diastole, beginning of systole. First phase systole ka hai, isovolumetric contraction. So A to B is isovolumetric metric contraction. Yahan par kya hoga? There is a sharp increase in pressure with no change in volume. Left ventricle contract kar raha hai. Jaise hi left ventricle ka pressure diastolic blood pressure ko exceed karega, is point per aortic valve opens. Or jaise hi aortic valve opens, now I have blood will go from the left ventricle into the aorta and that is known as the Ejection phase. End of ejection phase. Now C point per aortic valve closes, so you get the second heart sound. Aortic valve is closed, mitral valve is not yet open, left ventricle is closed chamber. Hai. C to D is isovolumetric relaxation. Left ventricle relaxes, there's a sharp fall in pressure with no change in volume. Or D point per jaise hi LV ka pressure, LA ke pressure se bohat kam ho jayega. At this point, mitral valve opens and now you have the filling phase. This is the phase of filling. LV volume increases, LV pressure increases slightly. Point A per jakar, mitral valve band ho jayega, first heart sound and the next cardiac cycle will start. A to B is isovolumetric contraction, B to C is the ejection phase, C to D is isovolumetric relaxation, D to A is the filling phase. A to C systole hai, C to A diastole hai. Thik hai? Aur konsa valve kaha par khulta hai, usko yaad karne ke liye, physio ma'am ko yaad rakhi ga, ma'am coco. A per mitral valve closes, this gives rise to the first heart sound. B per aortic valve opens. C per aortic valve closes, this gives rise to the second heart sound. And D per mitral valve opens. Ma'am, coco. Okay. All right. Uh, so Rahul Acharya, I think you are facing difficulty with the left ventricular pressure volume loop, right? Okay. Uh, uh, see, Peter, this is what I am doing in these two hours or two hours and 15, 20 minutes would be a very rapid revision of the important topics which we expect will come in the next paper. So, we have a little speed, zyada hai, obviously, because jitne bhi maximum topic covers cover kar sakenge, that is much better. Jo hum expect kar rahe ki these are the topics which are going to be asked based on uh, which are the frequently asked topics in the previous years. So, thoda sa speed zyada hai, but I'm glad ki aapne mujhe bata diya that you want me to repeat this. Dekhi ga, left ventricular pressure volume loop kya hai? 
दिस इज बेसिकली रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ कार्डियक साइकिल जिसमें हमने लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकुलर वॉल्यूम एक्स एक्सिस पर लिया है और प्रेशर वाई एक्सिस पर लिया है और ये देखिएगा वॉल्यूम एक्स एक्सिस पर 50, 100, 120 LV की वॉल्यूम है वो 50 और 120 के बीच में वेरी करती है और प्रेशर अगर आप देखें तो 40, 80, 120 120 LV का प्रेशर है वो 0 और 120 के बीच में वेरी करता है नाउ जब फिलिंग होगी वेंट्रिकल की राइट right? जब फिलिंग होगी वेंट्रिकल की तो वॉल्यूम बढ़ेगी फ्रॉम 50 टू 120 प्रेशर इंक्रीजेस फ्रॉम 0 टू 5 एंड जैसे ही प्रेशर बिकम्स मोर देन द एल ए प्रेशर एट्रियम का प्रेशर हमेशा बहुत कम होता है जैसे ही एल वी का प्रेशर एल ए के प्रेशर से ज्यादा हो क्योंकि एल वी में ब्लड जा रहा है फिलिंग हो रही है इसका प्रेशर बढ़ रहा है जैसे ही इस पॉइंट पर ए पॉइंट पर जब एल वी का प्रेशर एल ए के प्रेशर से ज्यादा है तो माइट्रल वैल्व बंद होगा जिसकी वजह से आपको फर्स्ट हार्ट साउंड सुनाई देगा फर्स्ट हार्ट साउंड इज ड्यू टू क्लोजर ऑफ द एट्रियो वेंट्रिकुलर वैक्स अब ए और बी के बीच में लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकुलर एक क्लोज चेंबर है देर इज अ शार्प इंक्रीज इन प्रेशर विद नो चेंज इन वॉल्यूम प्रेशर बढ़ रहा है फाइव से एट्टी तक जैसे ही एलवी का प्रेशर डायस्टोलिक ब्लड प्रेशर को एक्सीड करेगा एटिक वैल्व खुल जाएगा जैसे एटिक वैल्व खुलेगा ब्लड वेंट्रिकल से एटा में चला जाएगा जिसको कहते हैं इजेक्शन फेज अब ब्लड वेंट्रिकल का एटा में गया तो वेंट्रिकल की वॉल्यूम कम हो रही है प्रेशर भी कम होगा सी पॉइंट पर जैसे ही उस एल का प्रेशर एटा के प्रेशर से कम हो जाएगा एटिक वैल्व बंद कर जाएगा और एटिक वैल्व जब बंद करेगा तो सेकेंड हार्ट साउंड फिर से कैसोवॉल्यूमेट्रिक रिलैक्सेशन फेज जिसमें शार्प डिक्रीज इन प्रेशर विद नो चेंज इन वॉल्यूम डी पर आते ही जैसे ही एल का प्रेशर जीरो पे पहुंचेगा लोअर देन एल प्रेशर माइट्रल वैल्व खुल जाएगा और फिलिंग शुरू हो जाएगी वेंट्रिकल की और याद रखने के लिए मैंने आपको बोला मैम को को याद रखिए ए पर क्या हो रहा है बी पर सी पर और डी पर हैव यू स्टोर राइट Never give up, says ma'am. Your speed is always slow. <laughs> okay, all right. And um, heart emojis to you too as well. Never give up. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, some people say slow, some fast. So ये हमेशा ही दुविधा रहती है. चलिए यहाँ पर आ जाइएगा ये क्वेश्चन आपके एग्जाम का क्वेश्चन है. Pressure volume graph of cardiac hemodynamics dynamics is shown. B पर क्या होगा याद रखें मैम को को ए पर माइट्रल वैल्व क्लोजेस बी पर एटिक वैल्व ओपन सॉरी तो ये हो क्या कहा है ओपनिंग ऑफ एटिक वैल्व ए ठीक है ओके शुड नॉट बी अ प्रॉब्लम आगे चलते हैं अब ये इंपॉर्टेंट लूप्स हैं इन डिफरेंट वैल्वुलर कंडीशंस, ठीक है ये जो पहला वाला आप देख रहे हैं दिस इज अ टॉल एंड अ नैरो लूप व्हिच इज टिपिकली सीन इन एटिक स्टीनोसिस इसको भी समझना मुश्किल नहीं है क्योंकि मैंने आपको बताया था इस पॉइंट पर एटिक वैल्व खुलता है अगर एटिक वैल्व ठीक से नहीं खुल रहा है तो एल को ज्यादा प्रेशर लगाना पड़ेगा ज्यादा प्रेशर लगाने की वजह से उसका जो लूप है वो टॉल और नैरो नैरो क्यों क्योंकि एटिक वैल्व स्टेनोज है ब्लड ठीक से नहीं जा रहा है वेंट्रिकल से एटा में तो ये नैरो लूप हो जाएगा ठीक है सो टॉल एंड नैरो लूप इज टिपिकली सीन इन एटिक स्टेनोसिस अच्छा uh, आपने बोला मल्टी uh, स्टार ने बोला कैनन वेव कैनन वेव बेटा किस में दिखाई देता है जब एक जंक्शनल रिदम होता है वो जेवीपी का होता है कैनन वेव कैनन वेव है ना ये हम एलवी प्रेशर वॉल्यूम लूप कर रहे हैं ये टॉल एंड नैरो लूप एटिक स्टेनोसिस में राहुल आचार्य बोल रहे हैं कि मुझे ये समझ नहीं आया कि डायस्टोलिक डिसफंक्शन किस में होगा और सिस्टोलिक सो so, नाम से ही पता चल रहा है डायस्टोलिक डिसफंक्शन will affect the diastolic phase and systolic dysfunction will affect the systolic phase theek hai all right basics yaad rakhe to nahi mushkil hoga next let's see ye ek shift of the loop to left jo normal loop hai wo aapko black mein dikhai de raha hai red loop aapko ab dhyan dijiyega jab ye jo ye jo width of the loop hai 
दिस इज दी स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम तो जितनी भी स्टेनोटिक लीजन है उनमें स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम रिड्यूस्ड है जैसे आप देख रहे हैं एटिक स्टेनोसिस में स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम कम है ना अब ये वाला जो लूप है इसमें भी स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम कम है और ये है आपका माइट्रल स्टेनोसिस माइट्रल स्टेनोसिस में देर इज अ शिफ्ट ऑफ द लूप टू द लेफ्ट क्यों क्योंकि ध्यान दीजिएगा जो फिलिंग है वेंट्रिकल की माइट्रल स्टेनोसिस में रिड्यूस होगी द लेफ्ट एट्रियम और लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल के बीच में माइट्रल वैल्व है अगर ये स्टीनोज है तो लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल की फिलिंग इनकम्प्लीट होगी कम होगी नॉर्मल फिलिंग वन ट्वेंटी पर होती है कम है राइट स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम भी यहां कम है सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी टिपिकली सीन इन दी इन दी माइट्रल स्टेनोसिस ठीक है चलिए उसके बाद आप आ जाए प्रेशर वॉल्यूम कर्व इज शिफ्टेड टू द लेफ्ट ये इसमें कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है माइट्रल स्टेनोसिस अब आते हैं रीगर्जिटेंट लीजन पर रीगर्जिटेंट लीजन की जो स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम है वो बहुत ज्यादा बढ़ जाएगी देर इज अज इंक्रीज इन द स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम ठीक है अब ये आप देख रहे हैं याद रखें ये जो फेज था ये था आइसो वॉल्यूमेट्रिक रिलैक्सेशन जिसमें देर शुड बी नो चेंज इन द वॉल्यूम ऑफ द लेफ्ट मेट्रिकल स्ट्रेट लाइन होना चाहिए लेकिन इस रूप में आप देख रहे हैं कि ये जो लाइन है इट इज शिफ्टिंग टूवर्ड्स द राइट इसका मतलब क्या है आइसो वॉल्यूमेट्रिक रिलैक्सेशन में भी लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल की वॉल्यूम बढ़ रही है जो बढ़नी नहीं चाहिए है ना नॉर्मली बढ़नी नहीं चाहिए लेकिन इस लूप में इस डिफेक्ट में इस वैल्यूलर डिफेक्ट में एल की वॉल्यूम बढ़ रही है दिस इज गोइंग टू बी सीन इन एटिक रीगर्जिटेशन एटिक रीगर्जिटेशन ठीक है क्योंकि क्या हो रहा है एटा से ब्लड वापस लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल में जा रहा है आइसो वॉल्यूमेट्रिक रिलैक्सेशन में भी एल की वॉल्यूम बढ़ रही है उसके बाद आप आ जाए ये वाला एल वी वॉल्यूम लूप इसमें भी स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम बढ़ गया है अब बाय एक्सक्लूशन ये डेफिनेटली एम आर है माइट्रल रिगर्जिटेशन ठीक है अब माइट्रल रिगर्जिटेशन से हम क्यों कहेंगे क्योंकि यहां देखिए आइसो वॉल्यूमेट्रिक रिलैक्सेशन में पहले तो एल की वॉल्यूम कम हो रही है लेफ्ट वर्ड जा रही है फिर एल की वॉल्यूम राइट वर्ड जा रही है बढ़ रही है पहले कम क्यों हो रही है जब माइट्रल वैल्व अगर इनकॉम्पिटेंट है तो एल का ब्लड एल में जाएगा इनिशियली एल वॉल्यूम रिड्यूस फिर जब एल का प्रेशर एल के प्रेशर से ज्यादा है तो वापस ब्लड रीगर्जिटेट करके एल में आएगा और एल का ब्लड वॉल्यूम बढ़ जाएगी रिमेंबर आइसो वॉल्यूमेट्रिक रिलैक्सेशन में स्ट्रेट लाइन होना चाहिए वॉल्यूम में कोई चेंज नहीं होना चाहिए एल की वॉल्यूम में लेकिन रीगर्जिटेंट लीजन में चेंज हो रहा है कैसे एटिक रीगर्जिटेशन में देर इज अ इंक्रीज इन द एल वॉल्यूम ब्लड इज रीगर्जिटेटिंग फ्रॉम द एटा इन टू द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल एन आइसो वॉल्यूमेट्रिक रिलैक्सेशन और माइट्रल रिगर्जिटेशन में इनिशियली कम होती है ब्लड एल का एल में चला जाता है फिर वापस एल का ब्लड एल में आता है एन आइसो वॉल्यूमेट्रिक रिलैक्सेशन फिर ये वॉल्यूम बढ़ती है इज अट क्या ठीक है चलिए फिर आ जाए द हॉर्मोन विच इज इन्वॉल्व इन द रेगुलेशन ऑफ ब्लड प्रेशर इज बिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग एंड इनमें से आप देख ही रहे हैं कि विच इज दन विच इज गोइंग टू बी हैव एन इंपॉर्टेंट रोल टू प्ले इज एनजियो टेंसिन टू राइट एनजियो टेंसिन टू दिस इज द वन विच इज गॉट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट रोल टू प्ले द रेन इन एनजियो टेंसिन आल्डो स्टीरॉन सिस्टम ठीक है ना और ये आप देख ही सकते हैं कि वॉट इज वेन एवर देर इज लॉस ऑफ ब्लड और देर इज हाइपो टेंशन हेमरेज हाइपो वोलीमिया डिहाइड्रेशन देर इज अ लो ब्लड प्रेशर विच कॉजेज रेन इन रिलीज फ्रॉम द जे जी सेल्स इन द किडनी रेन इन विल एक्ट ऑन एनजियो टेंसिनोजेन विच इज सिक्रीट सिंथिसाइज फ्रॉम द लिवर एनजियो टेंसिनोजेन इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू एनजियो टेंसिन वन विच इज कन्वर्टेड टू एनजियो टेंसिन टू बाई द एस एनजाइम्स इन द लंग्स एनजियो टेंसिन कन्वर्टिंग एनजाइम इन द लंग्स एनजियो टेंसिन टू के बहुत सारे इंपॉर्टेंट फंक्शन हैं एनजियोटेंसिन एक बहुत पावरफुल वेसो कंस्ट्रिक्टर है जी को कम कर देता है यूरिन आउटपुट को कम कर देता है जिससे ब्लड प्रेशर इन तीनों की वजह से ब्लड प्रेशर बढ़ेगा तीसरी चीज ये अल्डोस्टीरॉन की रिलीज को बढ़ाएगा सिक्रीशन को बढ़ाएगा अल्डोस्टीरॉन सोडियम और वाटर रिटेंशन करेंगे जिससे ब्लड प्रेशर फिर से बढ़ेगा तो एनजियोटेंसिन टू के खुद के बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट एक्शन है इट इज अ वेरी पावरफुल वेसो कंस्ट्रिक्टर 
It also decreases the GFR in the kidney and it increases aldosterone which will increase the sodium reabsorption and therefore water retention just say blood volume badhegi, blood pressure badhega. Right? So this is angiotensin. Okay? Good. I think everybody's got this right. Let's go on to the next one. Arrange the following in the right order. One kya hai? Aortic area. Second intercostal space on the right, aortic area. Second intercostal space on the left is the pulmonary area. Fourth intercostal space, sternal border per tricuspid. Or fifth intercostal space, space mid-clavicular line mein, is going to be the mitral area. So this is your A. A is the correct answer. Aortic area 1, 2 is pulmonary area, 3 is mitral area and uh, 3 is sorry tricuspid area and 4 is mitral area. Oh. Cushions cover 34, what are the drugs for hypovolemia? Beta, ye uh, drugs hai to pharmacology se poochega, hana? Okay. <clears throat> if the diameter of an artery was found to be reduced to one third, by what value does the resistance of the artery increase? Now, resistance is inverse to the fourth power of radius. Radius has become 1 upon 3 raised to the power of 4. So, resistance will increase by 3 into 3 into 3 into 3. 3 threes are 9, 9 threes are 27, 27 threes are 81. So, answer to this question is 81 times. Absolutely right. Cush cushions, cushion covers 34, 81 times. Okay? Chalye. Good. Dopamine in low dose acts as which of the following? Is it a vasodilator or is it a vasoconstrictor? This is important. This is actually more of pharmacology than physiology. But dopamine in low infusion is a vasodilator. But in high infusion rates, it is a vasoconstrictor. And when it is an intermediate infusion rate, it stimulates myocardial contractility, increases the electrical conductivity and increases cardiac output. Right? So low dose vasodilator and high dose it is going to be a vasoconstrictor. So it's got a dual action and my answer here will be vasodilator. Okay? Vasodilator. KK? A hoga answer beta? Vasodilator. It is the intermediate dose where it increases myocardial contractility, increases electrical conductivity and increases cardiac output. High dose may vasoconstriction. Okay, spirometry, important from the examination point of view. Tidal volume kise kahenge? What is tidal volume? It is the volume of air inspired or expired during a normal tidal respiration. This is tidal volume. Then it is the inspiratory reserve volume. This is the volume of air inspired forcefully over and above a tidal inspiration with maximum effort. What is ERV? ERV is expiratory reserve volume. This is the volume of air expired forcefully over and above a tidal expiration with maximum effort. What are what is residual volume? Volume of air which remains in the lungs at the end of a maximum expiration. Capacities they keep. Inspiratory capacity is IRV plus tidal volume. Expiratory capacity is ERV plus tidal volume. Functional residual capacity kya hai? This is the volume of air which remains in the lungs at the end of a normal expiration. That is your functional residual capacity. Vital capacity kya hai? Kaise measure karenge vital capacity? Volume of air expired forcefully after a forceful inspiration. Ye pura vital capacity ho jayega. IRV plus tidal volume plus ERV. Or end of forceful expiration may the air which is left in the lungs is known as residual volume. And what is your total lung capacity? Total lung capacity is the volume of air which is in the lungs at the end of a maximum inspiration. Jab aap ek maximally apne lungs ko inflate karenge, jo volume of air which is in your lungs will be equal to IRV tidal vol plus 
टाइडल वॉल्यूम प्लस ई आर वी प्लस रेसिडुअल वॉल्यूम और जब आपके लंग्स मैक्सिमली इन्फ्लेटेड हैं आप मैक्सिमली एक्सपायर करेंगे तो आप वाइटल कैपेसिटी को एक्सपायर करके वॉट इज लेफ्ट बिहाइंड विल बी द रेसिडुअल वॉल्यूम सो दिस इज एज फार एज योर स्पायरोमेट्री इज कंसर्न याद रखें कौन सी लंग वॉल्यूम्स एंड कैपेसिटीज हैं जो आप नहीं मेजर कर पाएंगे बाय रूटीन स्पायरोमेट्री एंड दैट इज रेसिडुअल वॉल्यूम नहीं कर पाओगे एफ नहीं कर पाओगे और टोटल लंग कैपेसिटी नहीं कर पाओगे बेसिकली रेसिडुअल वॉल्यूम नहीं कर सकते हो सो एनी थिंग विच इंक्लूड्स रेसिडुअल वॉल्यूम यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू मेजर विद रूटीन स्पायरोमेट्री ठीक है एक लास्ट थिंग दैट वी आर गोइंग टू टेक अप इज वॉट हैपन इन ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव लंग डिजीजेज वॉट हैपन इन रिस्ट्रिक्टिव लंग डिजीजेज दीज आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ फ्लो वॉल्यूम लूप्स लेफ्ट वर्ड वाला है ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव लंग डिजीज का ग्राफ फ्लो वॉल्यूम लूप ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव लंग डिजीज में आप जो टिपिकली आप देखेंगे ये जो कर्व है वो इस तरह से स्कूप्ड आउट कर्व है अर्ली कोलैप्स ऑफ एयरबेस की वजह से यू गेट वॉट इज नोन एज अ स्कूप्ड आउट कर्व राइट साइड वाला इज रिस्ट्रिक्टिव लंग डिजीजेज रिस्ट्रिक्टिव लंग डिजीजेज हमेशा नैरोअर कर्व होंगे क्योंकि देखिए फ्लो वॉल्यूम लूप में क्या होता है वॉल्यूम एक्स एक्सिस पर है रेट्स वाई एक्सिस पर है है ना अगर लूप नैरो है तो वॉल्यूम्स कम है वॉल्यूम्स कम किस में होते हैं रिस्ट्रिक्टिव लंग डिजीज में रिस्ट्रिक्टिव लंग डिजीज जैसे पल्मरी फाइब्रोसिस है न्यूमोकोनियोसिस है इनका नाम रिस्ट्रिक्टिव इसलिए है क्योंकि देर इज रिस्ट्रिक्शन इन एक्सपेंशन ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव लंग डिजीजेज का नाम ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव लंग डिजीज जैसे ब्रॉन्केलास्थमा है या सीओपीडी है क्यों देर इज एन ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन टू फ्लो सो ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन टू फ्लो में रेट्स स्पेशली ज्यादा अफेक्ट होंगे तो देर इज अस्कूप्ड आउट कर्व ठीक है सो दिस इज एज फार एज योर मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एज फार एज फिजियोलॉजी इज कंसर्न आपके क्वेश्चन एनी क्वेश्चन दैट यू माइट हैव अच्छा सो आर्यमान का क्वेश्चन है कि ऐसा लगता है कि पूरा दिन पढ़ा आउटपुट वन और टू टॉपिक्स का ही हो पाता है ऐसा क्यों सो so, बेटा इसमें आपको एक बहुत ही टारगेट ओरिएंटेड स्टडी करनी है सबसे पहले तो जब सुबह उठते हैं तो इनफैक्ट हफ मंडेज को ही आपको पूरे हफ्ते का प्लान आपका एक टारगेट होना चाहिए लेकिन वो टारगेट्स रियलिस्टिक होने चाहिए रियलिस्टिक का मतलब है ऐसा नहीं आप रखेंगे कि एक हफ्ते में मैं मेडिसिन की सर्जरी भी और गानी भी खत्म कर लेंगे नहीं दैट इज नॉट पॉसिबल सो इट हैज टू बी वेरी रियलिस्टिक टारगेट एक आपको एक प्लानर बनाना है आपको संडे को बैठ के अगले हफ्ते का पूरा प्लान होना चाहिए एक एक मेजर प्लान होना चाहिए कीपिंग योर एग्जाम इन माइंड है ना लास्ट फिफ्टीन डेज यू हैव टू कीप फॉर वन रिविजन फॉर ऑल द सब्जेक्ट्स उससे पहले आप समय ले लें टू कंप्लीट दिस रिविजन साइकिल है ना लेकिन लास्ट फिफ्टीन डेज में आपको सब सब्जेक्ट्स को सब नोट्स को एक बार देखना है तो इस तरह से आप अपने टारगेट्स बनाए वीकली टारगेट बनाए डेली टारगेट बनाए तो एक टारगेट ओरिएंटेड स्टडी आपको करनी है तो सुबह जब सुबह जब उठते हैं Just for 10 minutes, just do a little bit of meditation, जहाँ अपने दिमाग को थोड़ा सा clear करो कोशिश करो किसी चीज़ के ऊपर एक किसी चीज़ पर ध्यान दीजिएगा random thoughts ना लेके आओ एक तरह से अपने अपने mind को थोड़ा सा काम करो What I do is in the morning when I get up, I do a little bit of deep breathing and deep breathing exercises and I put on some very nice soothing music. तो वो 10 minutes के लिए अपने आप को थोड़ा सा काम कीजिए काम इन सेंस सी ए एल एम मतलब थोड़ा सा अपने आप को काम और कीप योर सेल्फ जो अपनी सिंपथेटिक ओवर ड्राइव चल रही है आजकल उसको थोड़ा सा कम कीजिए ठीक है उसके बाद जो अपनी अपना प्लानर निकालिए आपने उस दिन का क्या प्लान किया है उसको करना है और कोशिश कीजिए रैपिड इट हैज़ टू बी रैपिड इट डू नॉट ट्राई टू स्पेंड टू मच टाइम Uh, अभी समय नहीं है टू स्पेंड टू मच टाइम ट्राइंग टू गो इन टू द डेप्थ आपको अभी ज्यादा नंबर ऑफ टॉपिक्स को कवर करना है राधर दैन गोइंग इन टू द डेप्थ हैव यू अंडरस्टोड तो कोशिश ये कीजिएगा कि जितनी आप एक टाइम बाउंड फैशन में एक um, एक टारगेट ओरिएंटेड फैशन में अपनी पढ़ाई कीजिए और कोशिश कीजिए आफ्टर एवरी वन और वन एंड हाफ आवर्स टेक अ ब्रेक फॉर टेन मिनट्स लेकिन उस टेन मिनट्स में ये नहीं है कि फोन के ऊपर इंस्टा देख रहे हो उस टेन मिनट्स में आपको अगेन या तो थोड़ी देर लेट जाइए या एक छोटा सा वॉक ले लीजिए किसी तरह से भी अपना आपको रिलैक्स करना है 
है ना एक वो जो पोमोडोरो टेक्निक बोलते हैं वो फॉलो कर सकते हो जैसे आपको ठीक लगे है ना लेकिन प्रेफरेबली वन एंड हाफ टू टू आवर्स यू मस्ट टेक अ ब्रेक फॉर टेन टू फिफ्टीन मिनट्स लेकिन वो ब्रेक में फ़ोन से दूर लैपटॉप से दूर दैट इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ठीक है और uh, थोड़ा सा शाम के समय थोड़ा सा एक्सरसाइज अपने रूटीन में लेके आए एक्सरसाइज कैसे टेक अ स्मॉल वॉक अराउंड द कॉलोनी थोड़ा फ्रेंड्स के साथ रिलैक्स कर लीजिए फ्रेंड्स के साथ बैठ के बैठ के कुछ डिस्कस भी कर सकते हो इस तरह से आप देखेंगे आपका आउटपुट और अच्छा होता चला जाएगा लेकिन आपको अपने आप को मोटिवेटेड रखना है अपने आप को ये बताना है कि यही कुछ दिन है जहाँ पर मैं अपनी लाइफ को बदल सकता हूँ सो आई मस्ट गिव माई बेस्ट सब कुछ भूल जाइए सब पिक्चरें एनिमल्स एंड और उनके बारे में सोचिए भी मत है ना दैट इज़ नॉट इम्पॉर्टेंट एट द स्टेज पिक्चर्स आएंगी जाएंगी फ्रेंड्स के बर्थडेज आते रहेंगे इंगेजमेंट पार्टीज आती रहेंगी कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है लेकिन इस समय सिर्फ एक ही गोल हमारे सामने है और वो आपको पता है वो क्या है है ना सो दैट इज हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू दैट इज हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू मोटिवेट योर सेल्फ कीप Uh, लेकिन फिर भी अपनी सिंपथेटिक ओवरड्राइव को कम करने की कोशिश कीजिएगा कीप इन टच विद अस वी टीचर्स आर योर बेस्ट गाइड्स है ना सो जिस तरह से भी आप जब भी कोई मैसेज करेंगे कोई चीज़ नहीं समझ आता है मुझे आप व्हाट्सएप कर दीजिए या मेल कर दीजिए या इंस्टा पे डी एम कर दीजिए आई विल आंसर दोज क्वेश्चन जनरली मैं वॉइस मैसेज देकर आपको आंसर कर देती हूँ सो आई एम ऑलवेज दैर एज फार एज फिजियोलॉजी इज़ कंसर्न और इसी तरह से आपके सब टीचर्स सब्जेक्ट टीचर्स आप ही के लिए आपके क्वेश्चंस आंसर करने में हमेशा तैयार रहते हैं सो कीप इन टच विद अस ठीक है मीन वाइल स्टे फोकस्ड स्टे काम एंड आई एम श्योर यू विल डू वेल सो थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर ऑल योर इंटरेक्शन इन दिस सेशन ठीक है और आप uh, पढ़ते रहिए और मन लगा के और एक जैसे मैंने आपको कहा कि एक काम और कंपोज तरीके से पढ़ते रहिए ठीक है एंड आई एम श्योर यू विल डू वेल माय बेस्ट विशेज एंड गॉड ब्लेस